G'day. How are we doing? Tezza, sup, cockhead. Why be rude, mate? I'm doing good, Tez. Thanks for asking. L Master, Andrew, Danny Racing. How are we all doing today? Back with some Gran Turismo 7. Would you believe it? So, we're just going to be grinding some more menu books because I've found myself uh, quite. I don't know what the word would be, behind? That'd probably be the word compared to everyone else. Not that I should really be comparing my progress to everyone else, but. Uh, still. I feel like I'm a bit behind the eight ball because I haven't even touched the missions yet, which some people have finished. Kiwi, g'day mate, how are you? Thank you all for joining. I, I will show you what I have been doing though. I will show you because... Why not? So yesterday, I got myself 1 minute 10.1 on this, which is decent. Uh, I can't really see myself getting a time like this. I think 10.1 is about the best I could do. So, uh, yeah, we're going to leave that there. I'm annoyed because I completed the cafe and missed the opportunity of getting my dream car, the Carrera GT, from the three selected gift cars. Oh, mate. That is rough. Carrera GT, what year was that built? Can you buy it from Brand Central if you want? And this is something I'm quite proud of this time here. I've got a 56. Which surprised even me getting that. So, quite happy with that. I've got a guide for this combination coming out tomorrow, actually. I was going to do it today, but then I thought, I'll stream today so you get a piece of content today, and then I'll do the guide for tomorrow so you get a piece of content for tomorrow, and that gives me a day off tomorrow from streaming. Tezza, try hard. <laughs> I did I did try hard. Yeah, I did. 05, you should, be, you should be able to buy it from Brand Central. You will have to spend the credits, though, obviously. It would have been much better if you could actually, um... If you could just have won the car, but... Oh, well. You can't always get what you want. But anyway, we're going to be jumping into these races today. The American Clubman Cup. Trying to earn... The Chevrolets... Up here. So a Corvette. Three Corvettes. So they call, they call it Collection Chevrolet. They could have just called it Collection Corvette because there's three Corvettes. Anyway, let's get this underway. I got the Pagani, that's 1.3, and the Porsche is 2.3. Good grief. Let's do this one here and this one here. Hello. That Monza S2 lap is probably your best lap in Gran Turismo. You actually beat us top drivers there. I appreciate that, Danny. Yeah, it was, um... Look, it, it surprised me. I could see the low 57. Absolutely, I could see that time. And it was just a matter of kind of getting one corner right. And I managed to get it right. And I guess I just nailed everything else. And, yeah, it surprised even me when I crossed the line. We're never touching that combo again, and I don't expect to be that competitive at every combo I do. Okay. Well, let's get this started. Oh, dear, that's a bit loud in my ears. Okay. Let me know if the audio mixing is uh, all good. All right. I thought I could get around the outside of him there.
I did 57 zeros twice. I kept always doing low 57s. See, I wasn't that consistent. I was getting like a really good lap and then maybe high 57s. Does this mean I have to go back and actually try hard the license tests? Oh, look, Tess, if you want to. It's actually quite fun, which is why I found myself doing it. Oh. Alright, well, we're a bit we're a bit all over the shop to start with today. No, don't run into him. Oh. I say you should, Tez. You should go for it. We don't have any competition at the moment, so... It would be good to sweat a time trial. So the thing I've found out for these races here gives you a suggested performance point. But if you go about 60 performance points below that, you should get yourself a pretty good race. So the recommended was 700 and this car's about 640. Probably gonna have to end up retrying this because I'm not being consistent enough and gaining enough time. Okay, now we're restarting this. One day I'm just grinding credits, just spam high speed ring group four for two hours and it's done. I'm the type of person to get gold and go off to the next one. I pretty much did that for all the license tests before, just to kind of get through it. You can earn credits from lobby races now. I, I heard about that as part of the new update from yesterday. That also added the wind indicator. So I've got basically kind of a headwind into turn one, tailwind into turn six. Oh my goodness. No one saw that. Tell you what, that wind speed indicator is something nobody asked for. We got anyway. I was quite surprised when I found out we had it. I've got a tailwind into here, so I have to be careful. Doing a little bit better than last time because we're passing this Corvette out of this corner now instead of instead of halfway down the straight. So hopefully this goes a bit bit better. I'm doing Fisherman's Ranch. Tez, is that the one where you're on the racing hard tires? The one where they're going to realise there's a bug, bring out an update to put you back on dirt and reset the leaderboards. Or are you doing something else to grind credits? Was the wind there before they added the wind indicator? That is an excellent question. Because it, they kind of left it a little unclear as to whether that was the case. I would say, um, I'd say probably wasn't. 
because it certainly didn't feel like there was any wind. It was always, you were always breaking in the same spots. Whereas if there was wind, there'd surely be quite the likelihood that you would have had a tailwind on some occasion and you would have went deep. Like, if, if, uh, uh, if they did, they kept that quiet. I don't even understand the wind thing. I don't really know why it's here, to be honest. I understand the way it works. It gives you a direction. So if it's sort of blowing in the direction that you're driving, you've got a tailwind. Which means your braking zones are going to be... You have to brake earlier. So you've got the wind helping you accelerate. You're going to have... Uh, You're going to have higher top speed. If it's a headwind, so if it's coming towards the front of you, it's coming towards the direction you're going, um, that's going to be blowing the air over your car faster, which means you should have increased downforce, decreased top speed, improved braking, and then the speed is the strength. So MS is meters per second. That being said, I, I don't really know why it's in the game. It seems... Gee, Gran Turismo 7 is definitely much more of a sim than sport ever, ever was or ever was going to be. So they do have to be careful and make sure to keep the game accessible and easy to play. Because if it begins to get too difficult, they're going to lose that casual player base which I suspect is quite a large portion of their sales. Look at that. Economics with smokescreen. Alright, I'm getting the hang of this car now. Does anybody, does anybody here watch supercars? V8 supercars in Australia? Who watches this? Or who watches that? Also, if you've got a tailwind while you're braking, it makes it more difficult. Because of dynamic weather, it's getting dark. Unfortunately, no rain on any American circuits, though. Nice tailwind there. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, there, there's a tailwind. Uh, the winds are going that way, which means there's going to be a tailwind coming into the, the sweeping left-hander before going up. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's going to be a tailwind. So there's a tailwind in any direction in which the arrow is going. So there's kind of a tailwind heading up into the corkscrew. Kind of a headwind into turn one. Headwind into the into that um, looping left-hander just before the sweeping left. I 
I nearly lost the car there. So there's a tailwind coming into here. And kind of a headwind into here. Tailwind into here, which probably explains why I'm understeering quite a lot here. Victory. I'll just beat Eagle Fraga, Danny Solis. I don't know Felix's first name. Tailwind is when the arrow is pointing in the direction you're traveling. Exactly. Yeah, Tez, the, it's to do with the direction in which you're traveling. It's not the overall direction on the track. So if you've got a wind, if you've got wind pushing this way, it's going to be a tailwind if you're going this way and a headwind if you're in, going in this direction. The corkscrew will be difficult with that tailwind now, absolutely, because you could go to turn in the back and just swing out if the wind is strong enough. LA Thorn, welcome back. Glad to see you in the in the chat again. Well, Smoke, I'd just like to let you know that I got the package that I'm shipping my PS4 in to get fixed. I'm sending it off on Friday and I'll be contacted about what's indeed wrong with it. Very, very good, mate. Glad to hear it. Is it under warranty? Is it under warranty, Thorn? How do you like the ZL1? It's a nice little car, a little bit oversteery, but I'm on the sports tyres, the sports softs, I'm not on racing tyres, so I, I can deal with it. Special stage route X. We're going to have to... See, this is kind of an outlier to my 60 point PP little deficit that I do. See, I had a pretty good race there. I'm in a championship recommended for 700 and I've got 640. So I'm finding about, you go 60 PP less and you get yourself a decent race, but... This could be an exception because I need really good straight line speed to be competitive here. Now, oh, yeah, the ZL one's quite quite nice actually. Once you learn how to control the, once you learn how to control the oversteer, of course. I'll tell you what I'll do here as well if I can. I can't. I was going to decrease the downforce, but I cannot. That's okay. Is there anything I can adjust? No. I have not purchased any upgrades for this car. That's alright, let's see what we can do. We're using the slipstream to our advantage. Oh, so Tez, this is perfect. See how the arrow is sort of... Essentially, it's close enough to parallel with the track. That means I'm going to have... And it's pointing up towards the front of my arrow, which means I'm going to have a headwind coming down the straight. And when I turn around, I'm going to I'm gonna be going with the wind and I should get a tailwind. So I'll tell you what will be interesting, actually. While it's like that, why don't we compare our top speeds down the straight? Oh, okay, that's an interesting test. We'll have to wait until I get out of the slipstream. Got another gear? Yeah. We'll wait until I'm out of the slipstream and then we'll calculate our top speed and we'll see if it's any different coming the other direction. Okay, I'm actually a little bit excited for this test. Okay, I'm gaining very quickly. Hopefully I can get to the lead before the end of the straight. Well, let's just not use the slipstream. That'd probably be better. So 
though, in theory, because I'm heading against the direction of the wind, it's pushing against the front of my car, which should slow me down. Wait until we go flat. Might be wondering why I'm lifting, because I want the car to equalise at its true top speed. Three thirty five. Okay, top speed of three thirty five. Let's head around turn one and see what our top speed is going the other direction, which will be with the wind. So we're going to have the wind pushing against the back of my car, which should in theory increase that top speed. I love running Route X online. I'd say with the power and gearing that LS has, you'd be straight stock getting a win easily. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, actually, it's already, it's been half the race, and I'm catching up to, I've caught up like 10 seconds to the leader already, so I've only got one more, one more straight to go. But I can tell you, coming off that, look at me accelerating. So I was going 335, was it? 335 going against the wind, and now in the direction of the wind, going 346. So there you go, there's your test. That's pretty good. Well, that's cool the way it works. We'll see how it works in um, online races and whether if you get a race long enough and that direction changes. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to bloody get a move on here. I'm not catching as quickly as I would have liked. I do have better straight line speed, but is it going to be enough? Getting as much slipstream as I possibly can here. Come on. I'm in the slipstream now, that should help me. I don't want to now give him my slipstream. They're trained to follow you, aren't they? Should be good enough here. Very nice. <laughs> Interesting. I never considered this. Maybe this is new just for GT7 and not Sport. Absolutely, yeah. It came in an update last night, actually.
Alright, this is what came in the update. Alrighty. This is what came in the update last night. Added wind direction and wind speed indicators. An arrow and number will be displayed in the upper right of the screen under the track map. 64 music tracks into music replay. Progression blocks and application errors fixed a very rare issue wherein menu progress would not be recognized and prevented players continuing their playthrough. Fixed an issue where the application error would occur if using broadcast feature of the PlayStation 4. Uh, it's just all little stuff, isn't it? A lot of bugs. They fixed a lot of bugs. Fixed an issue with weather for all race events. I find that weird because I never heard anything. The overtake function of the Dallara SF19 Super Formula Honda has been disabled on the license test S7 within the license pavilion. The ranking boards have been reset. What else? A lot of stuff. Like, this is, this is the list of all the things that came in the update. The other big one is fixed an issue wherein clearing all license tests on wet surfaces would not award the bronze trophy rain royalty. All right. Up next, Daytona. Thorn, any new cars? Uh, no, 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 no new cars last night, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, but I don't really mind because the game's only a week old, so... Um, game's only a week old, so I'm not really expecting any cars for another couple of months yet. Well, there's just a lot of bug fixes. It's, it's quite a buggy game, but um, that's okay. Drive to survive tomorrow. I know. Oh, the track goes this way. I want to see the paint. I want to see the livery on A. Felix's car. Whoa. Uh, what an awesome looking car. He's not going to leave me much room, is he? Oh, that's not a braking. Don't need to brake for that corner. Gonna have to learn this track. I have no clue where I'm going. Oh, I'm Mustang around the outside of the Corvette. <laughs> I actually got faster with the SF19 without overtake. I'm so, I'm so sad. You mean to say sad? Because I should have been faster with overtake. Yeah, I got a 105.0 with the overtake, which I was quite happy with because it was sort of on par with McEwen. Um, but I didn't, I haven't actually gone back to it yet. Whoops. <laughs> oh dear have you seen the new AMG F1 side pods or lack thereof thoughts on the Mercedes side pods okay I think it's interesting I don't think it looks that great 
the the big the big Ferrari side pods with the, with the swimming pools in them they they look cool but um, the Mercedes looks distinctive but I would say if they're able to get around and find still find pace without the side pods the fact that they were able to come up with such an innovation within the regulations is quite uh, impressive, I would say. It, it, their car does look strange. And correct me if I'm wrong, they had a full set of side pods at Barcelona, right? Does that mean they have two cars? Anthony Felix or Ant Phoenix, he's known for. First time driving at Daytona, you should do the circuit experience after this race. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've done like the, the license test here, but I haven't driven laps. This is my these are my first laps. I mean I thought Lindsay Lohan designed the car when I first saw it. Jeez. <laughs> oh no. Ryan, g'day mate. Daytona. The track someone punted me on Forza. Oh, it's good that it's the little things we remember. Merck gonna have two second advantage, I'm calling it 2020 all over again. Okay, here's another maybe unpopular opinion. I don't really mind if one particular one particular team is OP. A lot of people are like, oh, it's so boring when there's one team always winning. It's like, well, if that team can come up with a car all legal, but no other team can, and they're two seconds faster, then I'd say it's well deserved. That being said, if every single season of F1 was Mercedes winning the championship by a mile that probably wouldn't be very exciting to watch year year after year whoa they all moved over last second oh okay I've no clue where I'm breaking That's okay, we'll try again the next time around. Maybe I'm biased as well, because I, I do want to see Hamilton win an eighth championship. That's about the only the only argument that people have these days for him not being the greatest driver of all time, the GOAT. Whereas the statistics don't lie, but I would say to really put the nail in the coffin, it would be to win the most number of championships of any Formula 1 driver in history. Eight. Schumacher has seven, doesn't he? I mean, it's new regulations. Teams will be pushing what the regs say more and more. Oh, let me read that. Pushing what the regs say, and more importantly, don't say. The fact that there's so much variety in the design should be a good sign. Exactly. I'm with you, Thorne. Lovely thinking there. The regulations have to be tight. They do have to be pretty tight such that all the different designs are... Oh, what is... Why has that come up on my... Oh, you can't see that. My TV's being silly. The regulations have to be tight enough such that all the different designs are the same pace. But I'm all for different looking Formula 1 cars, I don't mind that whatsoever. I mean the Ferrari have swimming pools down the side of their cars. There's like a marker sticking out of the fence on the right, that's where you should start breaking. There's also one for the chicane, I found the one for the chicane. Um, there's like a 3 two, one on the fence. We're going to have to look out for that as well. 
there. That's too late. <laughs> I saw something sticking out of the fence. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do next time. Whoa! Oh, sorry, mate. I didn't see you there. What else I don't hate either is the Alpine livery. What's on the menu tonight, Smock? <laughs> what you cooking? I don't know. Don't know. It's good for Group Three, but I don't know about road cards. Yeah, oh, I've just discovered exactly that. I don't know yet, Ted's. Got to see what's in the fridge. Just before the two, I found found that breaking point. Yeah, Shumi has seven, but even he said that Senna was number one in his mind. I would admit I'm in love with the Ferrari design. Italian design is sexy in most cases. When they step outside, that you can tell. Yeah, Ferrari, um, like Ferrari cars, a lot of the, uh, the older Ferraris are just absolutely beautiful. And they've, I think, I feel like they've carried their, their eye for design over to their new Formula One car. Okay, where am I breaking now? Well, that's still too late. What am I doing? That's okay, we'll still win. Senna have five. Senna has five, right? All right, make sure we break on time here just before the two. Is the two like 200 feet or something? Or is it still meters? I can already tell it's going to be such a difficult braking zone into there. It's almost like I need to be braking as I cross the finish line. <laughs> Three, Senna has three, okay. If this isn't too forward of me, but do you have any plans for the future? What do you see yourself doing? Oh, no, that's okay. Um, I'm at a stage at the moment where I feel like I'm a little bit undecided. I don't really know. I had aspirations of going to university, um, but I also studied very hard in high school. I did a... Oh, look at the headlights. I did a special, like, uh, 
internationally recognized diploma in high school for academic students and part of that I needed to study very hard and I did and I did well I did well I'm quite proud of like the grades I managed to finish school with but I took a year off after I graduated I just worked um, worked spent time at home saved money and then moved cities to start university and it got to the point where I was starting and I was like hang on a minute I did not in really enjoy studying at all. So, do I really want to spend my adult life going back to something like that? And I kind of discovered the answer was no. So, I haven't done anything since high school. I just work full time and that's it. But, for all through high school, I kind of had um, aspirations of becoming a, a cop policeman but and that's sort of what I was going to go to university to help me achieve I don't need uni you don't need to go to university to become a cop where I live but I can help you but I didn't go to uni so I sort of felt like I had no direction from there but it's just I don't know I see other people my age who have become cops. They're so much taller, they're so much bigger built than me. I'm quite a scrawny looking guy. So, I kind of, I don't know, it puts a seed of doubt in my mind whether I'm actually built for it, but I figure I'm young. I don't need to know what I'm doing yet, so I'm just sort of going with the flow, doing what I enjoy. You know, you spend your childhood doing what everyone else tells you to do. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy. I very much enjoyed my childhood. I had a great family. I ha had, I have, have a great family. You know, I was never a troubled kid. I never had... My mum was always home. She was always looking after us. You know, I had a very good, I had a very good childhood in the grand scheme of things. But in saying that, there's always a freedom that comes with being an adult. You're like, oh, I can do whatever I want. I can go and do this every day if I want to. I can spend my money, do whatever I like, buy this, buy that. No one's going to tell me I can't. So it was kind of in line with that. I was like, well, I'm an adult now. Am I really going to spend my adulthood doing something I don't enjoy? So that's sort of my philosophy. If I don't enjoy it, I don't do it. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. I just do what I like and like what I do and don't really care about what other people think. But there you go. Oh, I got really heartfelt for a second, didn't it? Had he lived, I'd think he'd have at least four to ten, but we'll never know. I know. Absolutely tragic what happened there. Even I, I see Imola on the calendar now. It's got, it's renewed contract till 25 or something, isn't it? Or 28 or something, 26. Good few years. I think it's good. A new track's always a good thing. But every time we have a race weekend there, I think I'll put the wide body on this car. Um, every time we have a race weekend there and they go through that first chicane, it's just, like, you can't help but think of him, can you? No problem, man. I'm assuming you're not an old man like myself. But fun fact about the C4ZR1 is that the motor was built by Lotus. Ah, interesting. There you go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not very old at all. I'm quite young. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you an exact number, but I, I'm, I've only been... I've only been out of school for a handful of years. No worries, man. I've had people who were in the exact same elementary school class become local cops. The former company armorer when I was in the army became a sheriff's deputy. Yeah, everyone sort of, um, everyone branches off and does their own thing. But there's nothing, there's nothing about, there's nothing about becoming a cop that's turned me off. There's nothing about the job that's turned me off it really. It's just, I see everyone else doing it and there's so much, I don't know what the word is. They're, they're just bigger than me. I feel like I'm such a scrawny bloke compared, compared to some of the other guys I see going into the police force. I don't know. All right, let's put this wide body on the car. Actually decreases my performance points. Does it add weight too? 
Do I have a weight? Yeah, no, it doesn't add weight. It literally just makes me wider. I don't know. Well, we put the wide body on the car. We're also going to have to put some fresh wheels on the car too. Because widen the body, you need to widen the track. Now, does this take us back to the three GT Auto menu or back to the main menu? Back to the main menu. So if you go into any of these and then press back, it takes you to the main menu and doesn't take you back here, which is just like one tiny annoyance. Wheels. Well, we've got to put some fresh, fresh wheels on it. Owned wheels. What's this? Oh, you only have to buy the wheels once. Oh, sweet as. The cool thing about him is that he owned a 1993 Fox Body Mustang with a Cobra motor, a built 302 with a built 5 speed. He traded it in for a GMC Typhoon and then a Hawkeye WRX because he wanted something with a stick shift again. Is the GMC Ty Typhoon like a. like almost a cult car? It's got almost a cult following. I seem to think. I seem to remember people saying, oh, it was the big. A rare performance SUV or something, I don't know. I don't really know what wheels look good. I'm not a wheel guy. They look alright. The music rally... The Vroom one. The second one is actually a jam. Love that song. Sa shame we have to drive around Tokyo Center. Couldn't have picked a worse track. I don't love the song, I'll be honest, but that's not to say it's a bad song. Oh, look how wide those tires are. Wowee! That should give us a load of grip. If I purchase a paint, do I- I have to go to the livery editor to put it on, don't I? I can't just change the colour. Okay, this is something, this is something that annoys me. It puts, it, it gives you three random cars. So they're not random, they're the same ones every time. It needs to sample it on the car that you've chosen. The GMC Typhoon was a two-door SUV with all-wheel drive and a 4.3 litre turbo V6. It could blow the doors off that C4 VET stock, not to mention a Ferrari 348. Yeah, I've seen, um, I watched Doug Demuro car reviewer over in the States. Um, and he's reviewed one or two or something. So I, that's that's sort of how I, I know about it. That's how I know about it. Uh, yeah. I just wish it sampled the colour on your current car. Like, why? Should I put, like, this on my... I should put this on my car. I should just make it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I've never done liveries before. It was automatic only, though. Just like the GMC Cyclone and Buick GNX. The GNX had a turbo 3.8 V6. Soul Red is really nice. Oh, what? If 
use this feature, you'll lose the original design, yes. Oh, yeah, here are my colors. <laughs> oh. Rear wing, I don't want... We'll just make this black. I mean, that just looks absolutely shocking, doesn't it? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. What do I call it? I'm not really well versed in Aussie cars, but it's understandable on both ends. Yeah, I'm not. I'm fairly new to learning about cars as well. I've sort of a new hobby, I guess, in the last couple of years. So I don't know too much. I kind of have to research to learn, but I know a little bit about a, a good handful of cars. When are you going to put my R32 on? I'll do it now, Tez, okay? I've got plenty of money now. I still don't know what to call this. We'll just do that. <laughs> There's actually a company here in the States. It's an all aluminium version of the GNX V6, which can be stroked four and a half liters and with twin turbos and all fluid weighs 134 kilos and supports 2000 horsepower. What? Hundred Oh Barbie ZL one, that would have been good. So the engine itself weighs hundred and thirty four kilos, is that is that right? That's insanity. Two thousand horsepower. I mean I see I see people drive and review one thousand horsepower cars and that's insane enough. I think the most surprising car I've ever seen someone review is the uh, Tesla Model S Plaid. I just forget the exact horsepower figure, but it was Doug DeMuro again, of course. But the way he was kind of just thrown back in the acceleration, it looked brutal. That's the wrong place. Ooh, okay, what do I do? Load style, collection, Tezar. Uh, yes, I kid you not, the company is called TA Performance. Yeah, it sounds insane. Got to buy the color, I got to buy the wheels, got to buy the custom parts, buy the number plate, light bulb, what's that? Looking good, Tezza. Anyway, we're going to go back to the menus. I'm going to go back to the menu books now. It is a matter of taste, Luca. It's not my thing. But that's okay. Oh. Is that going to be the next menu book? Put some wheels on? No. Pan Am American or Pan American Championship. Look how beautiful that looks. It looks very nice, Tez. All right, let's win this bad boy.
Do I get a copyright strike for this music? Knowing YouTube, I would not be surprised if I do. In before my channel gets taken down for playing this music. Toyota Sierra. I've heard of that car. Don't really know what it is though. Let me have a look. Oh, okay. Butterfly doors. Hang on a minute. Maybe I have. <laughs> I, I have. I will have watched that video. Toyota Sierra. I'm going to have to go back and watch that one. All right, Pan American. Oh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to change car. I want to use my Candy ZL1. Suggested PP seven hundred. I'm gonna run at six fifty two. And I'm at Daytona again. I can sort out my breaking point. Let's get this underway. Hopefully I have more grip with the wide tyres now. <laughs> Look how horrific that looks. This, this left-hander coming up is surely flat. Yes, sir. Sure is. And this corner's probably going to be... A little bit harder on the brakes to begin with. There's so much more grip with these wide tyres. That's too late. Oh, I'm an oddball. My friends kind of joke with me that one of my fave cars is a Renault Twingo. Because even though it's rear wheel drive, has rear drum brakes, I just like it to poke fun back. Yeah, car taste is definitely all personal preference. Some people love the little buzz boxes. Some people love the really... Uh, high performance stuff. Not everyone does though. Well, my favourite car is a DeLorean, so. And people poke fun at me. People are like, why? It's an ugly car. It's a slow car. I don't happen to think it's very ugly at all. Oh! And that's just an example. I'm interested by weird, quirky, rare cars. Old cars too. Okay, I'm gonna have to brake more for that. Do you imagine wet weather at this track? <laughs> Hopefully they bring wet weather to some of these American tracks because I think at the moment zero American tracks have wet weather. I'm going to assume Didn't they say something when they were releasing the game that 
like the weather, the weather, the dynamic weather changes, uh, changes based on the location of the track. Well, no, they, there's dynamic weather everywhere. I'm stupid. It's just the rain. I guess I just haven't gotten around to it. Fave old school muscle car from GM is a 1970 Buick GSX Stage 1. Stock, the motor had 455. Oh, I don't know what CID is. Trying to read the comment and not crash. At 455 CID, V8 and 510 pound feet of torque from like 2100 RPM. Jeez. That'd spin up the tyres if you're not careful. Easy win for the Barbie machine. Oh, cubic inches, okay. 7.5 litres, my goodness. One big breezy boy. Hey, there's Matt McEwen. In sixth, well, Matthew McEwen, I think he prefers Matthew. Cubic inch, yeah, okay. What's the D mean? Does the D mean anything, or is it just literally what the unit abbreviation for cubic inches. Alright, can we fix our bloody breaking point in this one? We've got an extra lap to do it. Cards with so much more grip with these wider tyres. Oh, around the outside, half on the grass. Favourite American car, Dodge Viper TA. Keep an eye out on our Smokes Car Spots test. There's going to be a, a Viper coming soon. An old Viper. What's my favourite American car? Probably the DeLorean, obviously. Yeah. There you go. Favourite European car would probably be 
some description of a BMW. Oh, okay, where am I breaking here? Let's get this right. Let's go now. That's a bit early, isn't it? Alright, that was a bit early. A 96, yes. A 1996 model. Part of the first year of the second generation Dodge Viper. What do I think of Koenigsegg? I think their cars look really good. I'm sure they drive really well, but I personally don't have that desire to own one that a lot of people do. So you, uh, you ask like, a lot of people what their dream car is, and like, oh, Koenigsegg. That, uh, that doesn't do it for me. don't feel like they strike that particular design that I desire. But don't get me wrong, they're really, really interesting cars. I've got a blue with a white stripe model. I think the one I, the one I uh, found was a black with a white stripe. Or d does it have a stripe? I don't remember. This is going better, because I can actually break for turn one this time. Such a rough circuit, this. I sort of didn't really mean to go for that move. But it happened anyway. Alright, I feel like I've got a good breaking point for the chicane there. Now I just have to consolidate this turn one breaking point. At the moment I'm looking at my little yellow friend for turn one. But that's what I mean. You may wonder why have you got these distracting yellow markers on. I don't really look at them most of the time, but on this particular occasion, this one here is particularly useful to be a breaking point. Oh, I almost nailed it. I sort of cop a bit of flack for these yellow markers too. They, they used to be blue and a little bit more subtle in GT Sport. Now they're bright yellow and stick out everywhere, but they're particularly useful for the rain conditions because they show through the rain. The rain spray doesn't actually cover them up.
I love classic cars, the 69, 70s, uh, the 60s, 70s muscle cars. Can't afford them now, but I do have a 87 iRock ZT top. I don't know what that is. I enjoy it a lot. Oh, that's my breaking point. Oh, that's good. You have to enjoy your own car. Don't buy a car just because you don't, just because someone pressures you not to, or someone doesn't want you to. It's your car, your money. Buy what you like. All right, let's nail this breaking point into here. I feel like that was pretty decent. Oh, look at the Ferris wheel. Let's see if we can finish this though. We were three tenths up at the first sector. Let's not go too deep up here. Look, we're still three tenths up. Three, just before the two. Roll the speed in. Well, we gained a tenth. Should be a good lap then. It's just a straight dash to the line now through the last corner because this corner is long left counts as two for some reason and then this left kink doesn't count for some reason beautiful I owned a 94 Camaro V6 oh Smitty catching smock on me lunch break that's a late bloody lunch oh you're in Perth no that would be right on lunchtime wouldn't it in Western Australia at least. I rock Z Camaro 1987. Mate, I'm gonna look it up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty good looking. That car. Oh yeah, baby. Looking pretty good, I will admit. That does look beautiful. Do you still have it or I do have, yeah. Oh, that's great. Do you take it to, like, cars and coffee events and stuff? How's your day at work going, Smitty? You've joined me as I'm driving my, my candy pink Camaro. Camaro ZL1 1LE. Truly beautiful machine. Into Lagos now. This turn one's going to be difficult to get right, to say the least. Oh, look at how horrific that pink looks. I still have the Camaro as my weekend car. That's awesome, man. You hold on to that. What's your daily driver then? Oh, 
Oh dear, look at chat once I get out of this middle section. I'm actually surprised I got through there without spinning out. Alright. Oh, there's, there's a list. Uh, tough. Interviews are exhausting, especially when they're dumb. Oh. I guess, uh, have you had a couple today, Spinny, where they walk out and you just like, you, you just, you just do one of these ones with the resume? Here's a list of cars I've owned. 87 Chrysler LeBaron, 94 Mercury Grand Marquis GS, a 2003 Mercury Sable GS, 2006 Ford F-150, rear-wheel drive version, 2001 GMC Sonoma, 2006 uh, EX Civic, a 1994 Camaro V6, 2008, you owned a PT Cruiser? <laughs> That's cool. Daily driver, 2013 Mazda 3. Better on gas, I'd imagine. The first car was a... Oh, that's okay. Oh! Oh! Okay, the car's sketchy if you don't get that right. First car was a gift from one of my deceased uncles. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that. Good thing about the car, though. Yeah, that's always... It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? When you get an inheritance like that. Or if you get left something. Because you're like, oh yeah, I got this car, but why do I have the car? It's not a very nice thing to think about, I don't know. But that's that's good, at least you got something. That's something you enjoyed, I suppose. Yeah, cut beautifully. That's what, that's what happens if you move in the braking zone. So if I didn't take avoiding action straight to the back, you can see why it's such a dangerous thing to do in real racing. Oh! Do I save it? Yeah, I do. Alright. Don't touch the curbs. Either way, who would hire a person that doesn't check the cash amount in a place where each tool makes 20k average? Check the cash amount, like... Count the till or double check that a customer is giving the correct cash. Oh, uh, my grandpa had a 1985 Nissan 300ZX turbo from the factory. That's a pretty good car. Are they, they are they worth a bit now? Can I play this in i5 third gen 8 gigabyte RAM Intel HD? 2500 PC. Unfortunately, this game is just a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, Mudara? Mudara Mendes? Yes, unfortunately, just PlayStation. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. Thanks for jumping in the stream, though. Anywho, that already does me for this stream today. Keep up the grind, Smog. See ya. See ya, Smitty. Thanks for jumping in, even for a quick second. Yeah, that's my current car, the PT Cruiser. Oh, mate. That's a quirky looking retro machine, isn't it? Yeah, I see I see a few of them driving around here. Yeah, Chrysler did um 
few of those retro cars, didn't they? They had the Prowler. It was sold as the Plymouth Prowler for the first bit. Or was that the second bit? Was it originally the, shit, uh, the, the Chrysler? If I recall correctly, did they replace that... They replaced the Prowler with the Crossfire, right? Because so I did a... I did a post on my Smokes car spots. I keep I keep droning on about that, don't I? But for anybody that loves old cars, I highly recommend going to follow me because I like old cars too, and I'll pretty much post a picture of Oh! Pretty much post a picture of any old car I see, but I, I did see some Chrysler Crossfires. I did a post on that. And I seem to recall something to do with the Prowler. You just did a Max Verstappen. Oh, I nearly did another one. Don't touch the curb. It unsettles the car. Good boy, I've learnt. Man, I've absolutely walked away with this championship. Let's not go too deep here. I don't really know. Still don't really know where I'm breaking yet. Let's go there. That's better. That was maybe a little bit early. That was a good set of S. It's after the 150. I think that'd be on time if I downshift the second. Alex Albon's favourite corner. My fave Mopar is a 1970 to 1974 Barracuda 446 pack. Have you ever seen a 1969 AMC AMX or a Chevy Corvair? Neat oddball cars. I've seen... Oh, I've never seen them in real life. I will have seen the AMC AMX. Yeah, I've seen photos of that one. And what's the other one? Chevy... Chevy Corvair. I think I also have seen pictures of this one. Yeah. I have. Um, I suppose... I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing that is the original one. Han <laughs> it's got a section. Handling issues. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, Twitchy, mate. How are you? How are you, mate? What menu are you up to? I'm up to the Pan Am Pan Am Championship. And I'm on the last lap of the last race and I'm eight seconds in the lead. Point of view your Mercedes this year. Is that Glock? Is that Glock? Oh, I'm on the grass. And I still some somehow managed to stop that somewhat respectfully. Respectably, rather, not respectfully. Look at that track limit abuse. I'll tell you what, Thorn, by the way. Add me on PlayStation. 
Just a regular friend request, not a close friend request, because I will not accept that. I don't accept them from every from anyone, so don't, it's nothing personal. But yeah, feel free to add me on PlayStation. You can see my license times. Let's rotate this time. Much better. Matthew McEwen down in eighth. Man's is washed. And Smokescreen wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. Woo -hoo -hoo. Rough Friday. I'd go into details, but work's been shit house. Oh. Okay, I'm on menu 32. Gonna grind them out before I have to go out in a few hours. Surely you'd accept it from me. Ah, uh, Twitchy. As good of a bloke as you are, I probably wouldn't, unfortunately. Don't feel bad, though, because I probably wouldn't even accept the close friend request from Atom. <laughs> Rip on McEwen. Man's just getting roasted and has got no idea. No, uh, the, the only time I would really accept a close friend request is if I meet somebody in real life and uh, we happen to both have PlayStations. No problem. I can get... I get that you have a fair amount of caution while I'm mine. <laughs> yeah. I do. I'm trying to... Trying to keep my... My name a, a mystery. Okay, uh... I'm guessing the next the next menu is going to be Porsche, so it doesn't really matter which I get. I should have stayed on the left though, because that uh, that 911 2001 model would have been a little bit cooler than this 2009 model. But oh well. Do you mind me asking Twitchy what do you do? Do you mind me asking what you do? It's okay if you don't want to go into it. Beautiful. That's how you win a championship, boys. None of this mucking around. None of these flexi rear wings. None of these engine engine component changes. I don't know what Formula 1 are doing. I need to learn a thing from Gran Turismo 7. Fair enough. If you don't accept Adam, then no one's getting one. Yeah. My close friend request will only be literally friends I have in real life. I think I've only got one, one person I've accepted a close friend request from. When you do Porsche, please, please buy body rigidity first. It's a literal death trap. Thank you for the heads up, because I can guarantee you I would not have done that. Look at that. The menu books upgrade your Porsche anyway. Oh, Chris, what have you got to say about my Barbie car? I've heard about your performance. Congratulations on a fantastic victory. Thank you, Chris. Oh, and by the way, oh, here we go. The 6th generation Z01 may be the most valuable Camaro of all time. Huh. I'm a planned maintenance scheduler for defence bases around Australia. What? That's so cool! <laughs> oh, nah, so it's it's you that decides all the all the planned scheduled maintenance on, on the GT service. Mate. So it's your fault. It's your fault I, I had to stay up much later to get my Ferrari F50 time. Twitchy is just bad. <laughs> Company called Ventia. Venture? Long story short, I hand out thousands of work orders to contracting companies and Venture internals. Oh, mate. It's getting too complicated for me. Uh, Thorne, I actually work two jobs myself. I do a security guard work overnight, usually 8pm to 4am. And the other one is part-time. I have a retail job, but I work from 1.30 to 6 p.m. Jeez, mate. That's um, that's an intense schedule. Do you work both both jobs every day? Or you would it? You have part-time retail. Do you have any days where you work both jobs? Because that's an insane schedule. So, like, you finish your security at 4, go home, have some food. I don't even know what... um. <laughs> I don't even know what um, meal you'd call that. Breakfast, and then go to... Or it'd be dinner, because you're about to go to sleep, and then what? Sleep for, for five, six hours, and then go back to work? Goodness me. 
All right, I'm going to upgrade my Porsche to 600. Okay, we'll go and do the Porsche. I'm going to go and have a quick pit stop before. <laughs> my work is to give everyone else work, pretty much. <laughs> Oh, nice. No, it, it sounds like it can be quite a stressful job, though. So, I hope you can, hope you can clear your mind. But I know when I have like a stressful day at work, it, I get home and I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. Uh, I'm just gonna go for a quick pit stop. I'll be back in like two minutes, maybe. Just go to the bathroom, get some water. That's what I like to call a pit stop. I'll be back in two seconds. 17 viewers. I wonder how many of you will click away while I'm while I'm on my little intermission. I promise two minutes maximum. Can you handle it? Oh, he's back. Okay, um, down to 15 viewers. Two of you couldn't handle it. Uh, I do work both jobs on three out of seven days. I've been working two jobs steadily, apart from five months in 2020, since like 2019. I tell you what, yeah, it would take quite a bit to um, warm up to two jobs. See, I have my full time job. It's technically part time, but I'm I'm like maxed out part time, so I'm like two hours. I just do two hours less than than an actual full time worker. Where's my Porsche? Manufacturer. 
Porsche, where are you? There you are. I guess we're using you. That was longer than two minutes, that's what. Mate! 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 Yeah, okay, fair enough. Naked Blade, g'day mate, how are you? How's it going? Thanks for jumping in the stream. Okay, um, no. Twitchy says do body rigidity first. So we're going to go into maintenance and servicing and do that one. Is this what you mean, by the way? Restore rigidity? Because body rigidity is excellent. I'll wait for Twitchy to answer because I don't want to spend 25k on something on the wrong thing. Five to five Monday, Thursday, five to one Fridays, and now it's GT7 time. Jeez, that's an intense schedule. My God. Do you do 12 hour days, mate? Bloody hell. You don't need to. No, okay. What's Twitchy on about? Body rigidity? Or is it something in here? Increase body rigidity? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be what Twitchy means. It's really odd during that five month span where I went from the PT job I had to the full time I had now it was really draining, but I'm halfway okay with it now. Yeah, you get used to it over time, that's Definitely. Uh, I think Twitchy wants me to do this one. Try the oil change and see if it boosts power. If I go, I'll show you. Um, the stuff in GT Auto is like long-term stuff on your car. So you'll see... Um, you'll see down the bottom, I've got conditions. Excellent. So... As I drive the car, as I put mileage on the car, the engine will go down, the engine will go down, the body rigidity will go down, and I have to restore it. I could do a car wash, though. <laughs> Boilermaker life in Mackay. Boilermaker. I can't say I've ever heard of that profession. Profession. Boilermaker. Whoa, okay. A tradesperson who fabricates steel, iron, or copper into boilers and other large containers intended to hold hot gas or liquid. Maintains, repairs, boilers, and boiler systems. Okay, well, that sounds, um... That does sound pretty intense, actually. <laughs> Which I guess is... Uh, makes sense with the schedule you have there that that would be insane i would struggle to do hours like that i currently do i do full days but my longest day i only do one and um i only do one big day and it's uh, an 11 and a half hour shift with one hour lunch telling me to go back to the cafe but i'm going to upgrade this a little bit more we'll put the brake balance on We'll put the carbon ceramics on. And we'll put the racing brake pads on. We'll put the power restrictor. And the ballast, because they're nice and cheap. What else will we do? I haven't done the body rigidity yet. I'll do it. I'll do it, Twitchy, because uh, I want to be able to stay in control. Is there anything else I need? I don't think so. I oh, might as well put the sport air filter. We'll do that. I 
I don't want to change the way the car sounds. Oh, that, that'll do, I reckon. We'll do the computer. Pretty sure. I tell you what, I'm going to leave the engine because it might be pretty oversteery. Nah, the tune part, try without first if you want. Oh, yeah. In the old GT games, an oil change on a car with no miles would actually boost the power by a few horsepower. Oh, okay. I'm happy to test that because it's pretty cheap if I recall correctly. Okay, well, let's. Let's notice, my car has 472 horsepower. Let's see what this does. No, it's still got the 472, so yeah, it must, you mu I must have to wait until the, until this goes down. That's all right. Um, never made a boiler. Build underground mining vehicles. That's still equally as insane. My experience in the army kind of helped me a bit. There were times where I had to literally be up 36 to 40 hours on guard duty. 40 hours on duty. That's like barely humane, I reckon. I see you got your hands on a Porsche with over 600 PP. Thank you. Thank you for complimenting me on my PP. It wasn't all too often, but yeah, safe to say the army screwed up my sleeping pattern. Yep. Uh, driving a 512 PP GTO four-wheel drive twin turbo on sports soft tires. Loving it. I'm enjoying the sports soft tires too. I think um, they offer the most amount of grip to the point where the cars are actually controllable. But um, it keeps the car sort of loose enough that you can have a little bit of fun with it. Yeah, yeah, you told, you told me all this before, Luca. Oh, okay. Acquire all three cars. 911 Turbo, 911 Carrera, or oh, the 964 and the 993. Let's go. You can win them by finishing in top three in the Porsche Cup. Do I win all three? Do I win all three? That's the question. Well, do I have to do three championships? Because that would be a bit... That would be quite time-consuming, but we'll do it. Actually, I'm on menu book 31. I thought I was further back. Hello to all 21 of you in chat. Thanks for joining. Make sure to follow me on all my socials. Get yourself subscribed. We got S License Guides coming out. A new series I've started. Because, call me cynical, but I'm not finding too much in this game to actually make videos on. It's three races, okay. Oh, I gotcha. Porsche Cup, yeah, yep, 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 yep. I understand now, fully understand. I'm with ya. No, not change car, make sure on the sports softs. Alright, let's get out there. Fully understood now, Tez. I'm up, up to speed. Now, is it going to start raining halfway through this race? Probably. Well, there's no rain on the radar currently, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, look at the wing on that! <laughs> what the heck? Why is the wing on top of the existing wing? What the? That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. The wings on top of the stock uh, of the factory wing. That's so ugly, man. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. They put the custom wing on top of the factory wing. 
I can't take that seriously. Dark clouds there. Maybe there is rain coming. It's a long race, so maybe it'll come later. We have to get our overlay skills out here. To try and keep the back of this car stable. Ah, uh, okay, I know this sounds odd, but um, the way I tune is rather weird. I tune full power in the absolute worst conditions and tyres without assist. I usually do the transmission first, then the suspension. Um... Kaz told me you like wings, so you put a wing on top of your wing. More downforce. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. That was just unexpected. I was under the impression that it may have removed the factory wing to put a custom wing on, or either um, not let you put a wing on. I think it's going to rain here, because there's some dark-looking clouds around. Actually, what's this? This is going to be like a two and a half minute lap time. Five laps. It's going to be like 13, 14 minutes. Oh yeah, the rain is coming. End of lap two. You can't pit to change tyres. Yeah, that's okay. I'm on the sports soft. Which I suppose aren't the best at squeegeeing the water. But, at least they're not racing softs. I think I saw Matthew doing this, actually. He was doing it in a Porsche Taycan with racing tyres on, and it started raining. He went to pit, and it just drove him through the pits. Alright, um, where the radar? Still nothing there yet. I don't think this is flat. By no means is that flat. Another double wing boy. In quite an ugly green, I must say. sign of the rain. I'll take that, mate. Tristan Bayless got nothing on smoke screen. to learn how to take that corner because the car has some nice lift off oversteer. Oh! <laughs> We're going to keep going here. Okay, I have to be really careful coming into that section of the track. I've just face planted. Still 
Still no sign of the rain. I'm going to take advantage of that. Maybe I get lucky and I don't get rain in my race. struggle to win this now. I didn't need that crash. Did not need that crash. You know, it's all good. Ah, oh, it's going to be a struggle. We're going to have to drive impeccably for three laps now. Get done again, Tristan. I don't know how to control this car. a bit deep. Alright, we've gained what, like eight seconds on that lap. Maybe we can do it. Bazaar. G'day, mate. Did you put ballast in the Porsche? So it should be to the front as it's a back engine car. You know what? That's exactly what I didn't do. That's a good point. We'll have a look after this race. We'll see if we can do something with the ballast then. Okay, that's, that's actually quite a good point. Thank you, Bazaar. Thanks for joining the stream. Oh, I'm just braking too late now. I'm just being an idiot. Yeah, we'll have a look after this race, what the ballast situation is.
I'm slowly learning the tuning of the cars. Fair play. Good job. I haven't really yet. I'm still finding my way through everything. Bumbling my way through. I'm not that familiar with tuning. I also don't love it. Not a massive fan of the tuning. I don't mind like buying and upgrading parts, but as far as like the settings sheet goes, that's just a little bit, a little bit on the complicated side for, for a simple-minded man like myself. But the ballast thing makes sense. That that absolutely uh, makes sense. So thank you for that. Still no sign of rain in this race. I think I got lucky. Because I think it's entirely possible that this, uh, that it can rain on this race. Have I just done the same mistake again? Yeah, I have. Oh, whoops. I'm going to have to cut the corner. I can't believe it. Three seconds. Oh, there's rain on the radar. We should be safe, though. Damn it, I'd probably have won this race if I didn't crash that second time. Or do I just go for an almighty dive? <laughs> I cut the corner and I still couldn't win. <laughs> oh... Yeah, no rain. Took you like five tries to have a tiny bit of rain, but still screwed me. You were running racing softs though, yeah. That's fair. You know, I was starting to get the hang of driving this. Really gentle on the throttle. I think it's because this game is linked online. The game gets live timing weather, so if it's raining in Spa right now, even though you might be in France... And if not, it'll be raining in your, in your race. I think, um... I don't think it's quite linked to live timing. But I think it's, um... I think it's sort of modelled off how it would happen at Spa. Oh no, dark clouds. Gonna have to cancel the race. Red flag the race. Don't refund anyone's tickets. Actually, I also was blabbergasted by the double wang on one of the Porsches at the start of the last race and I hung behind him for probably a little bit longer than I should have. Uh, I do, despite what it looks like, I do want to try and make that corner. Oh.
Alright, I'm actually getting the hang of this car finally. Just gotta be really gentle. Side by side. That's okay, it's not a disaster. What's that message? Try soft in the front and enter at the back for the wheels. Oh, I, I want to stay on the, the sport soft. I think they offer the best, um, the best experience. A nice compromise between the loose physics and actually being able to control the car with some level of consistency. Plus, I'm really OP in the dry. If it started raining, I reckon that'd give me a good challenge. No sign of the rain. Don't crash, you should be able to win this one. Just don't bloody crash, mate. That's all you gotta do. Alright, we gotta make this corner this time. No more mucking around. Just after the 150. Yes! We made it! Actually, that's got really dark all of a sudden. Although there's no rain. Beautiful side-by-side -side moment there, no contact, absolutely clinical. This is a much better race than before. Oh, okay, we've got to break on the 150 there. I was going to go side by side there for a second. Finally sorted out our breaking point.
I, I know there's a Nürburgring race coming up. I wonder if it'll rain while we're going around there. Whoa! Touch the AstroTurf. On the 150? Yes. Karatsa is quaking right now. I just, I can feel it. It's taken the stock wing off his car to, to put the custom one on instead. Bit of chase cam action, why not? Back to our homely good view. I'll tell you what, I'm actually having to concentrate to control this car. Oh, you're on the same race as thought you finished it. Ah, uh, no, I crashed twice in the first attempt, so I didn't, I didn't win it. So I've had to try again. And I'm going much better this time, because I'm now in the lead, and I'm, I'm still on the penultimate lap. Still no sign of rain, though. I've been lucky to miss the rain. Let's see if we can nail this lap. Oh, that's that cut the corner there. Cut the corner there, to be fair. Penalties are off here, so we'll continue on, we'll keep on trucking. That 
max disconnect there. Oh, maybe that gave us some rotation. Max concentration here. Nine tenths up there. Oh, awesome! We got a we got a thirty five at the end there. I don't know about you, but I often like to listen to creepy pastas and horror stories on YouTube. Some of them are quite good, actually. I don't um I don't pursue them myself. That being said, though, I think the whole idea of like haunted haunted anything haunted haunted houses ghosts. Like interests me, but not in the way that like a fiction writer would write about ghosts, but I don't know if you ever watched a TV show called Ghost Hunters, or like Paranormal Witness, or uh, A Haunting, that's another one. So it's sort of based on true stories. I love that sort of stuff. Ghost Hunters was the best because they took a scientific approach. They, they took a scientific approach and they would try and debunk the claims. And then they would say, they would try and debunk the claims made, made by the owner of the building or the owner of the house or whatever. And if they couldn't debunk it, they would then start to consider it as evidence of a haunting. And that was particularly interesting because they would often find stuff they couldn't explain. Good work. You didn't bin it. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't bin it that time. How good's that? You might check out the ballast though, that uh, Baser was alluding me to so let's go and do that we've won that Porsche this old Porsche here um, let's go let's save Nürburgring for last let's go and do Maggiore car settings detailed settings oh ooh, sorry um, ballast ballast positioning towards the front all the way to the front My car was pretty OP there, to be honest, so let's put quite a bit of ballast in. Is that too much? We'll go 25. 25. There's no, there's no units. <laughs> 25 clicks to the front. Yeah, I have. Yeah, um, yeah, I like those sort of shows. As far as the horror, horror movies, some of them can be good. I remember the original, I say original, it's a remake, isn't it? It, the one that came out in 2017. I felt like that was a pretty good movie. And I enjoyed that. And then... Um, the Invisible Man, I really enjoyed that one. Not really a horror, but more of a thriller. Ghost story was good too. It had a based on true events feel about it, but I don't think it was. Alright, let's see what this does. I've got a load of ballast in the front this time. What? Oh, he's gonna come back to me. Oh, maybe the car's less oversteering now. Yeah! That 
ballast has introduced a little something I like to call understeer. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, 50 about right. Ah, I think I've reduced it to 25 in the end. Look at the new pit lane. Oh dear. Oh, gave me a sub. Thanks very much. I'm pretty sure if you're a public subscriber, you should get a notification on the screen in a minute. Thanks very much, mate. I appreciate that a lot. We were talking before about how I try to keep sort of private online. I'm going to reveal my face, though. Because I think that'll just make streaming a lot easier. I can just have the face... Uh, I can just have the camera pointed at me. Got to get me to 500 subs before that happens. Where do I break here? Oh, okay, that was maybe a little bit early. Even. This car is actually quite a bit more controllable now. see something on the next lap around. Is there a pit lane on the... On the okay, give me, I'll give you updated on the pace. Hey! Kimmy, got the Kimmy notification. R4M Baser underscore YouTube has subscribed. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that. There's a pit lane for the west circuit too, which tells me we might get a west end circuit. Around the outside. Oh yeah, baby. down this crest. That's better. Alright. Gotta make sure we're gaining enough time here. Oh, that's exactly what I didn't want to do. I've only had three creepy occurrences happen to me in real life. Once while I was in the army at Fort Knox. Oh, Fort Knox. I'm pretty sure Ghost Hunters did an episode there, so that doesn't actually surprise me. I was doing guard shift at night, and I had to go up to the top floor, which was unused. You know, I'll let you, I'll let you write out that story, and then we'll read it all in, in one hit. I've made an absolute hash of those S's. I haven't really had too much creepy stuff happen. Oh yeah, I want to see, is there a pit lane here? There he is, isn't there? There's a pit lane there. So we're in for a new track yet. Yeah, there's a pit lane there. On the side. And I've been distracted by the pit lane. The creepiest thing I've ever had happen to me was... Um... Oh... Okay, uh, I've only had three creepy occurrences. One while I was in the army at Fort Knox. I was doing guard shift at night, and I had to go up to the top floor, which was unused in a building. And once I got up to the top floor, I was doing my normal checks, but I kept getting a distinct feeling I wasn't alone and not wanted. I didn't see anything, but I'll never forget it. Yeah, that's that, a lot of people report that. Um, feeling like you're not alone is... 
one of the one of the most common creepy feelings. The creepiest thing I had, my uncle used to own a house. And it was like a decent house. It was like in like in, in the suburbs. Nothing wrong with the house. But this was when I was little, maybe six years old, and just starting to play the PlayStation. You had a PlayStation 3 in the lounge room. So when when we go and visit, my brother and sister and I, it was more, more so my brother, my sister was like a baby back then. But um, yeah, I was pretty young, like just out of toddlerhood, I'd say. We'd always wake up really early, like before the sun came up, and we'd just be bursting out of our skin, my brother and I, to be going to play the PlayStation. And like, we'd go and do that, go and sit in the lounge room. But I'd always, 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 while it was dark, before the sun came up, see a shadow in the corner of my eye in the kitchen of this house. It was like the, the kitchen was sort of next to the lounge room, but like around the corner a bit. So you could like see the end of the kitchen through the, through the doorway. And I would always see a shadow in the corner of my eye, like every time without fail. And then I'd look and there's nothing there. And I think I was talking to my mum more recently and I told her and she, she said she got a creepy feeling in that house too, so... There you go. But I've had nothing in particular happen to me. I haven't had any events, it's just like things I've seen. But it's interesting now, because if I was as old as I was now, knew as, I mu as much as I was now, I would investigate that a little bit more. Oh man, that was a challenge to actually stay on the circuit there. Oh, I wonder when we're going to get the West End circuit. So we have the East End, that silly little, silly little track right on the east of the track. There's clearly a West End circuit on the way. Oh, that's, that's going to be the corner. Second time was just a weird ass string. Oh, I'll wait for you to wait for you to read uh, to type out the second part. We can read it all together. I just read it uh, a preliminary, gave it a preliminary reading first to make sure it was <laughs> appropriate. Do with a bit of downforce, hey. Definitely breaking too late there now. Uh, second time was a weird ass dream. I know this is going to sound real weird, but I dreamt that I was this little girl and I'd had an argument with this girl's older sister. I ended up, I ended up grabbing. I woke up, I could hear the laughing in both my ears for like 10 minutes, and I was fully awake. Oh, yeah, that's creepy. That's definitely one of those, uh, that's definitely just a weird dream. Well, I'm not doing as well in this race. Have a look on the exit on the outside of this corner. There's like a 
yellow sausage there. I reckon that's the apex of the corner that connects the west end to the main straight. There you go. Now it sounds really odd, but it was a dream of mine I had. You know, dreams can be really strange. I have dreams sometimes that are like so real, it feels like just real life. And then I wake up and I'm like, gee, was that real? Or I have dreams where I wake up and I'm relieved that it's not real. <laughs> breaking through there for? Does he lift up off the ground? No. Uh, I don't want to put you off. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine, man. <laughs> No, 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 it's all good. I have strange dreams too, I think everyone does. Hey, and if you were a serial killer, who am I to judge? Going for the move. Oh, you're joking. What? No. Oh, why did that just happen? He actually went for the move. Oh, I don't want to do the race again. Oh, that's pain, mate. I've got to do it all again. I should be really good at this track now, though. That gap's closing. Oh, threaded the needle through there. Alright, I think I need to break at the start of the curb for that there. Oh. Oh, great. Finally, someone I don't have to... <laughs> Oh, no, you're all good. I appreciate the humour. <laughs> hey, I, I can't judge someone's occupation. Got to put food on the table somehow. Not a line of work I would personally get into. But that's okay. This is going a lot better this time. Yeah, I definitely think that's sort of the apex of the West End connection. 
just got back from dinner. Oh, you know what I cooked? Oh, did you do those chicken nachos, mate? I would love to know what was on the menu, Tez. Oh my goodness! That's okay, that's not the end of the world. I blame the army for my warped sense of humour. Some people... Uh, some people like being over for dinner in a Hannibal Lecter sort of way. <laughs> Looks like the ballast is working. Yeah, it is. The car feels uh, more stable. That there was just me too trigger happy on the throttle. That wasn't the car. I tried too hard to get on the throttle. But I, could, I feel like I can turn the car and the back's not going to kick out. Like, especially through here. You saw nothing. But it's more controllable. Uh, chicken breast with a KFC type crumb bacon slap between two burger buns with Chris cut fries. Mate! Mate! An absolute feed. Oh, get done, Blajan. Get destroyed. Did you use 11 herbs and spices, Tez? Or are you clickbaiting me? It's pretty much homemade KFC chicken burger. Mate, that sounds incredible. AFC is definitely this is the most superior takeaway. Nothing beats KFC. McDonald's doesn't beat it. Hungry Jack's doesn't beat it. KFC is top tier. Any pizza joint doesn't beat it. Let's get this properly this time. There we go. That's what I needed to do last time. Start of the curve. That's better. I can drive. Hallelujah, Mama. As my grandma would say. Uh, I see. I don't know. I don't know if they have it where you live, Tez. Church's chicken? Ah. Oh, mate. Tez? Why, why, did you, why did you have to say that? Now you've made it weird. Don't make it weird. Don't make it... I haven't heard of Church's Chicken, but I, I, I live in a different country to Tez. I 
I disagree. Smoke, you need to have church's chicken or at least Popeyes. Okay, I've heard good things about Popeyes. Whoa! I've heard good things about Popeyes, but like, uh, we don't have any of that in Australia. Oh, we do have a, we do have a burger joint called Betty's Burgers over here. Absolutely wicked. Their chicken burgers are just next level. Like none of these, none of these formed pureed chicken crap burgers. Like a real slab of chicken breast, coated in like. Southern fried chicken coating. Oh, 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 oh. Keep it off. Oh. You could see that was a balance between getting it stopped and getting it turned. <laughs> oh, the car just felt absolutely sublime going into that corner. into the slipstream. Not quite going to get that done just here. I would definitely like to try some other really highly regarded chicken restaurants. But so far KFC is the gold standard, at least in the part of Australia I live in. Oh, I'm into the barrier again. Rats are beats me again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rage. But I've had Church's chicken while I was stationed down south in the USA, and I'm telling you, the chicken is the best I've had. The biscuits are like cocaine; they're that addictive. All right. Well, if I go to, if I ever go to America one day, I'm gonna put it on the map, put it on the menu. I think I would like to go to America one day. I never travelled. I have. I've actually have never left my country. I've never actually been on a plane. It's just I don't know. We never. We just never had a holiday anywhere else. I think I would like to travel one day. Oh, Karatsa. ISTG, mate. I'm pretty sure I gained quite a bit in this section. Yeah, I do. Any breaks through here, so I'm gonna try and get underneath. Didn't work. I should be close enough. Come on, slipstream, do your thing. He sent it down the inside. Sorry, mate. Clean as you like. No, I'm joking. I know that wasn't very clean. They're just AI. Oh, That's how it's done. That's how you win the Maggiore GP. Uh, I'm from New Jersey. 
Is that what NJ is? New Jersey? And I've had New York and New Jersey pizza. None of the franchise lot ones like Papa John's and Domino's can compare. Oh, yeah. It's the same here. If you get, like, uh, Domino's, we have Domino's, we have another one called Pizza Hut. If you get any of those, they're just, like, your average, average cheap as chips. Cheap as chips production pizzas. But then you go to, like, a proper pizza joint, like a wood-fired Italian pizza, pizza place. They're just... Mwah. Delicious. I liked Wendy's Burger when I went to Canada. Hey, don't feel bad. I haven't been out of the United States. Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't know. I, I never even wanted to venture outside of Australia when I was a kid. It's never, never, was never a desire. I never felt like I was missing out on anything in particular. All right. Beautiful. Onto the Nürburgring now. It rains at the Nürburgring, doesn't it? Wendy's is good. When it comes to burgers, I like White Castle and Five Guys. Five Guys is coming to Australia, I believe. Pretty sure it is. I hope it is, because I'm going to try it when it happens. Okay, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not in particular, no. <laughs> Fair warning, White Castle will give you gas. I'm going to stay away from White Castle. It's okay. <laughs> I do want to try Five Guys, though. I'm just going to turn the light on because it's getting a bit dark. I'll just be two seconds. Just turn some lights on. Alrighty. I was just thinking right before I came back, when I was... I was just thinking right before I came back was when I get a Porsche Carrera GT, what mods would I do to it? You should get two. Keep one stock to appreciate the car that Porsche wanted to create. And then buy another one and clap the hell out of it. That's what I think you should do. Let's get straight into it. I have a feeling it's going to be raining here, or it's going to rain at some stage. Does the Nürburgring have rain? I don't know. Shower thoughts. <laughs> My goodness. Rain's like halfway in, so there is rain at the Nürburgring. Okay. Oh, yeah, of course there is. Super GT made a video on it. It was one of his first GT7 videos. Oh, under the grass. Under the curb. Oh, he, he saved it. This ballast has done wonders. Thank you, Bazer. Oh, what are you two doing?
Naked Blade, Book 21, Asia Oceania at Tokyo, Fuji, and Bathurst. What car is best? Um, there's no, um, there's no in particular best car. You've just got to make sure your, um, your car meets the performance points requirements. So up, if you go into the event, it'll say recommended performance points and give you like a number in like a green oval. Make sure whatever car you use is around that performance points rating. The AI are a little easy, so depending on your skill level, you can potentially go less performance points than um, the recommended. But like if it says 600 PP, just make sure your car is about 600 and you should be fine. Oh, fake Super GT fan, Tez, I'm warning you. I do intend on moving out of New Jersey in about two years. I plan on moving to Virginia and a little while after then, possibly Texas. If possible, buy a secondary home outside of the USA somewhere. Oh, yeah. Would you rent that home out or would you leave it as a personal holiday getaway home? Okay, my four-wheel drive GTO can't hack it. Yeah, make sure you've got decent top-end speed. But yeah, uh, any car is fine as long as it's eligible. And just upgrade it or... Yeah, just upgrade it to make sure you, your performance points are decent. Alright, I'm seeing some rain on the left-hand side of that radar. I do want to try some Texas barbecue in my life. I've heard that's pretty wicked. Oh, like a, like a full roast, a full uh, brisket. Some of the videos I've seen on some of those slow cooked briskets, and like it just, you, you literally go to pick it up and your fingers just sink through it. Oh, so yum. Never tried it, but I would definitely want to. Is this flat? No, I want to lift. Right, the rain's hanging out to the west. I could have gone fast through there, but I didn't want to bin it. Stay in the carousel. Thank you. Um, I would actually try to move and become a citizen somewhere, considering Croatia or Georgia. Ah. Croatia looks nice. Georgia. Is that a country in Africa? That would be a cert that would certainly be a very interesting change of would you call it a lifestyle change? Probably would. You got lucky with no rain. Yeah, I know. I I kind of wanted some rain. Cuz I got lucky with no rain in the spa one too. Over the grass, that's all good. Mm -hmm. 
Karatsu beats me again, I'm going to be filthy. Who's better in a straight line? We're about the same. Uh, no, Georgia is actually near the southern part of Russia, near Turkey. Oh, okay. That would be... That would be a really, really cool, like, life change. Moving country is insane. Alright, where am I breaking? Oh, no! No! <laughs> He's gonna beat me! Oh... No. Oh. It's actually quite low cost to live there. They also have great wine there from what I've heard. I don't know what the legal drinking age is in Australia, but I have an unorthodox biz idea that could be interesting. Our legal drinking age here is 18. Bit of an unethical life hack, you may say. I can't believe I did that. Why am I so stupid? What's your business idea then? As unethical as it may be. Whoa! I didn't know the front would lift up. Oh. That scared the living daylights out of me. I figure at 18, most armies will allow that age to serve. If you can serve your country at 18, why not be able to drink? There you go. Yeah, I think I think you can serve at 18. It's either 18 or 21. I'm pretty sure it's 18. Though. I can't see why it wouldn't be 18, because 18 is the legal age for everything else. Oh, no. This is sketchy when you hit the curbs. Oh, 
right, I'd like to get through these three cars relatively quickly without a hitch. Thank you. The idea is to make my own bourbon in Georgia, despite the majority of it being made in Kentucky. Ooh, okay. Pretty sure that's a popular hobby, though, making your own alcohol. It's like a thing over here. There's, we sell... There's like um, beer brewing kits at supermarkets. Look at the rain hanging out to the left of the radar, out to the west. Yeah, there's like beer brewing kits in supermarkets. You can buy like the powder and brew it yourself. Buy empty bottles. Buy bottle caps. That's just beer though. Oh no. Superstar, g'day. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for jumping in. I remember seeing your name out on track in like daily races and stuff. Superstar. How are you? Oh my goodness. Hang on, did I miss something before? Naked Blade, are you doing daily racing much? Sorry I missed that chat before, if you're still if you're still here. I, I did some the other day. I was pretty put off by the amount of tuning I needed to do because it took me like an hour and a half to get uh, to actually get a good race out of a daily race. Whereas in GT Sport, you can jump in and you got the makings for a good race instantly. I was sort of put off by it, so I haven't done any more since. And I've just sort of been focusing on trying to get these menu books done. And I'm struggling with this race because I'm not making up the amount of time I need to be on the leader. I've still got seven seconds to go. About less than a third of a lap remaining. Ah, uh, no, damn it. I'm not going to win this now. No. Oh. So frustrating. <laughs> Rob Davis, how are we doing? I'm doing a good, thank you. How are you? Thanks for jumping in the stream. First time I've seen your name around, so uh, welcome. Superstar Bingo, I'm good. That's good to hear. Baser, this is one of the tracks I'm not looking forward to driving. I probably have to sit on a bucket. <laughs> Uh, well, here's the thing. It takes a certain mixture to make bourbon, but I realize I'll need time to be profitable. I have a few other ideas that would fill in between them. Uh, that would fill in between then. One of them is to... One of them is my own car company and not even an EV company. Ooh. That would be interesting. It makes you wonder, what does it take to start a car company?
Not even an EV company either. I'll be curious to hear how you how you'd want to do it because I think we're about 30, 30, 35 years away from actually running out of fossil fuels. Which will obviously significantly inhibit a traditional car manufacturer. Oh. That's too much speed. That's okay, just keep it straight. That's okay. We'll, we'll get away with that one. Front's gonna lift right. Okay, I'll keep you updated on the pace. Oh. <laughs> I've just crashed again. Susan. Oh no, I don't think I can pronounce the last name. Tip Tora Hardio. Susan Tip Toratado. Am I saying that correctly? <laughs> Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you. Baza, have you seen this race at night with the rain on GT7? It looks so scary. I haven't just yet. I haven't. I'm looking forward to getting to it, though. Let's see if I can finish facing the correct direction. No, I'm going to finish facing the wrong bloody direction, aren't I? So we're going to have to retry. <laughs> oh, this, this car's difficult. That's all over the shop. It's okay, this is the one I can feel it. Oh, Mr. MCA, I see you bloody lurking there, mate. How are you? For anybody in chat now, if you go down into my uh, if you go down in my stream description, I've got a link to Mr. MCA, who's the gentleman in chat now who's just posted the eyes emoji. Go and check out his YouTube channel. If you want guides and yeah, if you want guides and tutorials. Mr. MCA is your man. It's in my... It's in every... It's in every video description, every stream description, because I truly believe... Uh, I truly believe he's one of the best in terms of tutorials. That's where I get a lot of my strategies from. Just call me Susan, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, Susan. How are you, Mr. MCA? Struggling with the, the hard tyres! Oh, we'll get away with that. We'll get away with that when we're facing the correct direction. I've got to start getting them builds out if tuning will be a thing, yeah. Um, quite... What's the word? Disillusioned? Uh, I don't like the tuning. In sport mode, at least. That'll be my caveat. I sort of don't... I don't mind it in, um... I don't mind it in the single player. But, like, the sport mode, the daily races were horrific the other day with all the tuning I had to do. And I'm hemmed in here. Alright, I'm going to have to have a pretty good rest of the lap to catch up 26 seconds. Just grinding credits, yeah, because everything you do in this game costs credits, doesn't it? Even to put a livery on the car, you have to buy all the parts. Paint colour, the same parts that's on the person who put the livery on the car. Everything. I'm still doing the menu books. I'm up to menu book 31. I'm struggling because I think I've probably been on this Porsche menu book for about an hour. Because I have, I've had to retry the races two or three times each. Especially this one. From what my chat's been telling me, I've been lucky to actually not even get any rain on this one. So it could have been raining as well.
Superstar, it's all about grinding in GT7. Yeah, I'm getting through the, the game, sort of, um, just getting through the game to, for now, and then I'll look at sourcing some credits as I need them. But, like, at the moment, I can't even buy that Peugeot for Daily Race B. So I can't even, like, go in and have another go. So I literally cannot afford the Meta car. Oh. Now I'm just getting blocked. Come on, I need to be gaining more time. So I haven't done much grinding yet, I've just, yeah, just been playing as intended. Oh no, there's the barrier. That's okay though. It's like the GTA Online days. Yeah, we've been waiting for GTA 6 for how long? We finally got it. Rockstar actually was purchased by Polyphony Digital. Now everything's sponsored by EA Sports, I reckon. EA Games, whatever it's called. Uh, I don't want to get blocked by this car. This is the corner I spun out on last time because I ran into the back of this exact AI car. Oh, come on. I have to get past him. Oh, why is he breaking there? Spin, jeez, man. There's the leader. Whoops. Oh, come on, I've got to win this one. Nearly spun out. All right, I'm in the slipstream now too. Oh my goodness, that's heart in the mouth stuff there. Come on, I've got better straight line speed here. Ever so slightly. Oh, is he maxed out? I've got another gear. Here we go. Down into the tear garden. Oh, my goodness. Deep breath. <laughs> you have no idea how loose the car felt through that last twisty section.
Who wants to see the replay? Of just the ending. Oh, man. And relax. Deep breath. Sharp exhale. Oh. Uh, let me do... This might be a little bit dark there. There we go. That should be better on the webcam. I finished second. <laughs> oh, that's difficult as anything. I want to see... Oh, I want to see the ending. This is something I don't like about the replay. It goes to a black screen when you skip. Watch this. Funny. Did I lose it here as well? Yeah, I did. I lost it here as well. That's okay though. And I was pretty good. All the way through here, I think. Oh, we had that little off track excursion. <laughs> That's out of context, GT, for sure. And then, here's this. Oh, check this out. Opposite lock. Opposite lock at 302 kilometers an hour. I mean, what, what sort of a photo is that? I would have the two clippers at intro. <laughs> oh, my car looks filthy. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is great, this part. We'll display the dust. This is probably so boring to some of you. What does this do? I don't know what this does. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Oh, I see. <sighs> I can't. I've got opposite lock at 300 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Look at that!
This may look weird because that car closest to the camera is going to be blurred. Third, in order for you to replace every single US car and drive the equivalent miles with electrical energy, one gigawatt nuclear plant would have to be built every three weeks until 2050. One gigawatt, one gigawatt nuclear plant would have to be built every every three weeks. Okay, I'm, I'm finished with my photo opportunities. My photo ops, got to get those candid shots, you know. But I want to see what the rest of this section look like. It, it is just not every day of the week you correct oversteer at 300 k's an hour. <laughs> That's so scary. Oh, I nailed that braking. Oh my goodness. That is just freaky. Freaky fast. Okay, let's go and get our Porsche rewards now. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Every three weeks, all 510 in total. Is this for your... Is this for your electric... Uh, for your um, car company dream to come to fruition? Fruition? Not to... What a, what a photo. I think mine's better, though. Is there supposed to be the options behind the text there? I don't think there is. Oh, I got Sainty Croix. I've just unlocked Sainty Croix. It's of course going to be pronounced Saint Croix or Saint Croix, but I call it Sainty Croix. Oh, now that's a classic shape. Porsche are just a great company, aren't they? Like, they've nailed their cars. I don't even hate the Panamera, to be honest. Some people hate the Pan Panamera. I don't hate it. Supra now? Is that a Supra? Supra Turbo A, Supra RZ 97 and Supra RZ 2020. Supra time. Okay, well, let's get this party underway. I reckon we can finish this Supra. Um, I think we can finish this Supra competition before the stream. Now, that's the actual requirements for these green people to have everyone here in the US to drive an EV. Uh, my car company is kind of a fusion of Ferrari, Lotus, and Lamborghini. Ooh, okay. I see what you mean. Everyone to have an EV.
Um, yeah, there definitely needs to be more infrastructure because the percentage of people that drive electric cars now compared to how many they want to be driving electric cars is so much smaller. What's odd to me is that I respect anything that makes power, but I love a screamer and I also love a big torque monster of an engine. Oh yeah, I think I think the majority of people do. It's just the I think it's the limitation of the fossil fuels. Because I think people are making their electric cars now, developing that technology so that when everyone is forced to go to electric, there's an established technology there. But I, I definitely, I kind of agree that, that there's just nothing that beats the, nothing that beats the screaming noise of an engine. Okay, PP 700 or less, and it's got to be a turbo. Should I go the Swift Sport? Oh, I've got to go the Castrol Supra. Oh, it's got to be the Castrol. Oh. Now I'm way overpowered. Hang on. Right, up the ballast. No, I'm still OP. Have I got the restrictor? No. Output adjustment. Here we go. Should I do that? 660? I think that'll be a decent race. Hang on, I'll, I'll be back in two seconds. Literally less than a minute. I'm back. I'm back. I told you. I told you. Oh. Don't get me wrong. I think that EVs have their place. I just don't think the government forcing something that... I just don't like a government forcing something that should be left to the market to decide. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's just... I think it's hard because they're sort of backed into a position where they've got a lot of people speaking out about global warming and that sort of stuff. I'm going to make it 650. You got a lot of people who are very vocal about climate change. I do think a lot of it is just to keep people happy, to be honest. Um. Oh, Mr. MCA, all good. I'm assuming you're waving goodbye. Goodbye, mate. Thank you for jumping in. For a minute. You basically jumped in right. I was in between <laughs> in between menus. <laughs> That's okay.
good luck with whatever you're going off to do. I'm assuming it's got to be some grinding. Oh, I've got nitro. Oh, still here for now. <laughs> All good. I oh, wasn't sure if you were waving goodbye or saying hello back to me. Alright, this race should be pretty easy. My car feels quite underpowered here. I think that's because it literally is. Use that nitro down the straight, I reckon. Oh, turn. I think some EVs are good. I actually quite like the Porsche Taycan. The test... I don't think there's, there's too much wrong with the Tesla, to be honest. They seem like decent cars. Maybe their build quality is a bit how you're going, but uh, I think electric cars can be good, but if I was buying a car right now, like if I was going to turn the stream off and going to buy a car, I would buy a petrol car. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably buy a petrol, but then it sort of depends what else I would do. Let me ask you this, if climate change predictions are accurate, why would people be buying beachfront property and banks bankrolling loans knowing in X number of years the sea will devour the home? That It's a good question. It's an excellent question. I can say right now I would not be buying a home in a, in a low-lying area. I mean, we've had flooding recently where I live. As recently as a couple of weeks ago in some properties. No, I, I was relatively unimpacted. I was not really impacted at all. But some properties were like up to the up to the roofs, like literally the tip of the roofs of some properties were sticking out of the water. So it would sort of stand to reason that if the seas rose too much, those properties would end up be per would uh, end up being permanently underwater. I guess we don't know how far in the future that's going to be. I think, I think it's good to take some steps early, let it um, try and sort of solve the problem before it starts. Oh dear, that's wide. Because a lot of these performance car companies are going electric, like they've set a year during, during which they would like to be 100% electric, like Audi. Audi, Porsche, all that, all those sorts of companies. Although I think it's a bigger problem in Europe because they have a lot more population in such a small area. I'm pretty sure London is one of the most polluted cities. All right, this this car is very OP for this category. <laughs> have to nail the breaking points, which I'm not doing at the moment. What this track needs wet weather. Interlagos should be the first American track to get wet weather. Right, 
braking is an issue, yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling to pick out the exact braking points. If only Mr. MCA had made a guide on this already. Frankly, unacceptable, mate. See, that's that was just way too early. performance points less than what it recommended. How am I 20 seconds out in the lead? How's the, how's the chirping when you get off the throttle? Or when you change gears? Right, I felt like that was a decent lap except for turn one. Let's break late in the heat. Slightly too late, but better. Diesel engine is still viable. The very first diesel ran off peanut oil of all things. That's the other thing too. We got like alternative fuels to think about. Which I think can become I think they could become quite a good alternative synthetic fuels and biofuel hydrogen hydrogen cars are sort of a thing there's some cars that do run on hydrogen I'm pretty sure there's a Toyota Yaris concept that runs on hydrogen and I think that is that uh, an alternative fuel car could give, um, give petrol heads sort of what they want because I'm, I'm assuming those cars make an engine noise. Okay, I'm definitely going to be changing my car for this next one, because this... Like, I want to win, but this is just ridiculous. <laughs> Those damn voids. We're going to have to pick a road car. Oh, let's see what this Supra can do, I suppose. Maybe we can go and upgrade it. As beautiful as that car is to drive, it's just like way too OP. In my opinion, the powertrain layout of my car company would be shotgun style approach... Shotgun style approach, gas, diesel, hybrid, EV. As in every car could run off all four, or you got to have a quite wide, uh, quite wide range of cars that runs on different ones. I think either way, it's quite interesting. Okay, so we need a turbo car. Well, I suppose we'll go and pick from a car while we're in the event, so you don't have to worry about actually checking. Well, unless it's different for... No, 700 or less in turbo. Okay. Well, let's go sort by... 
Aspiration. It'll put all the turbo cars at the top. Uh, let's... I'm confused. Let's sort by aspiration. Turbo. Okay, so we can choose any of these cars. Well, this new Supra is 466. We'll go and upgrade it a bit. Arturo Jaramillo Livia Poma. Sorry, I don't speak Spanish. No hablo espanol. Lo siento. I did a little bit of Spanish in high school, so I remember how to say I don't speak Spanish. Oh, Sylvia Speck R Aero, S15. What car should I pick? Oh, no, let's go. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go and clap this Atenza out. I'm going to go and absolutely clap this Atenza. Let's go. Oh, let's start with a wing. It would be diverse. You could have an EV, but if you wanted a combustion engine, there'd be an option for you. I'm not just going to abandon ICE. Okay, I see what I see what you mean now. I think that's the best approach. Oh, <laughs> plot twist. They can actually speak English. <laughs> Don't you worry, friend. <laughs> G'day, thanks for jumping in the stream. You had me there for a second. Custom parts. All right, let's go. You're going on the car. You're going on the car. Oh, there's nothing. There's no rear parts. Ah. I only had half a semester in middle school of French and Spanish. I had to do a language in my in my time in high school, so I learnt quite a bit of Spanish. Why is the custom wing set more uh, cheaper than the Type A? When the Type A is just a tiny lip? Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Nani. I like the Type 7. Well, they look good. Let's go with those. Um, let's change the paint colour too. Let's make it blue. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Paint, 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 paint. Special colours. Blue with flakes. See, I want the rear wing. We'll make the rear wing black. Alright, and we'll go and upgrade it. Put some performance parts, go across the pond, over to the tuning shop. Let's put the fully adjustable computer in it immediately. Nine grand on a silencer, I suppose so. Oh no, surely there's something a little cheaper. 
we'll go this one. That's the Mazda 6 here in the States. Yeah, it's called the Mazda 6 in Australia too. I guess they just call it the sedan in Japan. And because this is a Japanese game, they go by... They go buy it. Oh, ceramics are so expensive. Racing brake kit designed for maximum stopping. So they're both, they're exactly the same. Oh, that's not what I meant. I understand a little English, but speak Spanish. Oh, yeah, okay. That's alright. I'm well, happy to have you here all the same. If you have at least a uh, basic understanding of what I'm talking about, then you should be in for a good time. Okay, what else? Let's put the sport suspension. I'm starting to think I'm not going to be able to get this to 700 performance points. Where are you from? I'm from Australia. Australia. A state in Australia called Queensland. Nice place, actually. Lovely weather. Oh, we got to put the turbo on it. That's got to... 516, 538, 532. So that's actually better. Oh. Got to do stage one first. Got to do stage two. Got to do stage three. Then it's the fourth one that's deathly expensive. Oh, you can't even do it. Oh, never mind. I wonder if they'll ever put in the McLaren Senna. I wonder if they'll ever put the McLaren Senna in this. The only McLaren I have ever sat in was a 650S Spider. I've also been inside of an SLR McLaren. SLR McLaren? That, they're a pretty legendary car from what I've heard. It was a female dog to get out of, not in. I'm guessing it was like a really low car and you like fell into the seat. That's what I reckon. Oh, that's actually going to decrease my performance. Well, I don't want to do that. That's going to decrease too. That's going to decrease. Hmm, what else can I do to it? So that's going to decrease, decrease, decrease. That's not going to do anything to it. That'll increase it, but they're so expensive. No, it has a really high door sill because of the tub. Oh, okay. You literally slip below the sill. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, yes. You have to, like, lift your feet up, up over the edge. Yeah, no, I, got, I gotcha. I think I've done pretty much everything I can. I can do that, but that's getting really expensive. 
Oh, let's just let's just go full send. Oh, this car better be a weapon or I'm going to be mad. That is cool. I'm from South America. Oh, I'm South American, exactly from Peru. Interesting. Yeah, I did Spanish in high school, so I'm sort of a little bit familiar. I, I'd be a lot better reading a Spanish sentence than hearing it. Alright, I think that's about everything I'm going to do to it. Let's go and... Let's see what this would do. See, watch as it's not powerful enough and I'll just spend all those credits for nothing. Circuit de Sainty Croix. Another car I was shocked that I fit in was a Lotus Elise. I'm six foot and, it's, and at the time I was 220 pounds. That's a tiny little uh, lightweight performance car, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen those. Really small. Oh, I wonder if I can... Okay, I wonder if I can increase the downforce maybe and that'll... Yeah? Six sixteen, that's the highest there. All right, that's going to do. Let's go. Hey, Act One Eighty, I have a low to lease. It's tiny. Is that the? Is that the car in your in your profile picture there? Oh. It'd be really peppy, wouldn't it though? A lot of fun to drive, I'm assuming. I wish Lotus was in the game. Yeah, I know. Oh, no. I feel like it should be too, because it was ready to go. It was ready to go in GT Sport. It was in the GT Sport beta. But it just never made it into the real game, and then we haven't heard of it since. Okay, I'm just breaking too late and being an idiot now. It was a one-off car that could do over 240 miles an hour. My profile pick is a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ and Viola Bast. Did you take the photo? Two thousand and three Elise Sport one eleven. See my profile picture is my logo. <laughs> it's not even really a logo, is it? It's just my name with a smoke background. I don't even have a logo, really.
800 kilograms, 116 kilowatts, 0 to 105.1. It's a special edition. The lightweight nature of that car makes it very fun to drive, though, I've heard. No, I got it off the internet. <laughs> All good. We go, we go into a corner. <laughs> I'm mucking around thinking the straight goes on like an idiot. Like an absolute tool. Oh no. There's a corner. I was looking at the interior. I liked the white seats. That's what it's all about, lightweight, yep. Nothing to wallow around in the corners, nothing to move around. Bare bones, lightweight, you can have a light engine. That's relatively inexpensive to run, but still get performance, uh, still get supercar figures. It makes sense. It's just a, I guess the niche is very small, because I'll, Lotus, I wouldn't exactly call Lotus a very popular car brand. You don't see them around much. The last exotic I saw up close was McLaren 600 LT in chicane grey. Um, what have I seen? I saw a Ferrari Testarossa recently. Something I've started doing is going to cars and coffee events near me. Which I really enjoy. I've only been to one so far, but... I intend to go to more. Oh, what are you doing, Cockabun? But yeah, you sort of never really know how many cool cars are in your area until you go to a Cars and Coffee. So yeah, I saw a Ferrari Testarossa there. I saw a Ford GT40 replica. Di Tommaso Pantera. A lot of old cars. Keep it under control. Oh, he's got it. He's caught it. Ray the Fox Phoenix. Hi. Give like and sub. Thank you very much, Ray. Absolute legend, mate. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in the stream. Thanks for subscribing. That means a lot. Thank you. a bit deep. Alright, this Atenza goes alright, actually. Thank goodness, because I spent a load of money on it. Okay, give me, I'll give you updated hey. on the pace. Just let me alone, I know what you're doing. Thank you, Ray. R4M Ray the Fox Phoenix has subscribed. Thank you, absolute legend. Leave me alone, I know what to do. Yes, I'm from Germany. It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, it'd be nine o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it? Good morning for Germany. 
It is currently 6 p.m. my time, 6 o'clock on the evening of the 11th of March 2022. Formula One drive to survive tomorrow, so that's exciting. Last car show I went to was back in 2019. I remember seeing a yellow Aventador SV in the show. I never did like yellow all too much. I'm more of a dark red kind of guy, like Magello red. Oh, yeah. The yellow is very in your face, especially on those uh, supercars. It's like very in your face, and you can imagine the type of people that would want to buy a big yellow several hundred thousand dollar supercar. If I was to buy a supercar, I'd probably get it in grey or black, dark blue, not yellow though. And that's, I mean, you can probably gather that. My favourite car is a DeLorean, it only comes in silver. Grande, Kimmy. It's 3am in New, Jer New Jersey, USA. Oh, it's an honour that you're staying awake for my stream. Win these supers and they'll probably call it a night because I'm gonna go and make dinner. Well, I guess good morning to you too, Thorn. Even though you never went to sleep. Or maybe you did. Maybe you did go to sleep and you've just woken up early or late, I don't know. But I'll tell you, the, the cars and coffee events have made me um, maybe want to go to like a, a proper auto show. Like where they reveal new cars and stuff. Don't get me wrong, for the longest time I was a fan of Verde Ithaca. I'm at work right now. Oh mate, you're even watching smokescreen on the job. You'd be at your security guard job, right? Are you just sitting in the office with a YouTube tab open? Security cameras on one screen, smoke screen on the other screen. That's a lot of screens. Say that ten times fast. Make sure you don't scream. <laughs> 3 04 a.m. here in Pura, Peru. My laptop at work. <laughs> That's great. So you're the same time as Scotty then, Arturo. Not Scotty, sorry, um, Thorn. Sorry, Thorn. I've got another follower from the USA called Scotty he watches and comments on all my videos. Another loyal viewer. Oh! Yeah, apologies, mate. <laughs> Look at that one more lap to go. Is he gaining? He's gaining. He's got better straight line speed, but I'm better in the corners. Is he going to go for the move here? Yes, he is, because I'm going to absolutely make an absolute mess of the first corner. That's not gone well. That is definitely not what I'd call ideal. Alright, now we've got a bit of work to do. Oh, Scott is your middle name. <laughs> hey, I wasn't that far off then. Oh, yeah, he's coming for that apex and then I want to just park it. Okay, I'm a little bit worried here because I would like to be in front of him. Tezza, yet, I mean, every stream start to finish that's why you're a mod mate oh whoops oh damn it sorry mate didn't see you there
Oh no! Let's block him. He's tried to do me. He's gone for the almighty dive bomb. He's in a breakthrough here. Yep, see you later. Alright, we should be able to win this one then. A lot of you are probably watching this thinking this bloke's an absolute filthy driver. Loyal viewer and supporter, time six. Don't forget. Tell you what, I need to turn another light on. Hang on. There we go, you should be able to see the wheel now. Dawn, hey, I don't mind making new friends. Usually do that in games like this. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Give give people someone to talk to. I'm happy to accompany you on your late night work endeavours. Gotta keep awake somehow. It's been good getting to know you too, Thorn. Sound like an interesting guy. In a good way. Alright, what's next? Suzuka. Is it gonna rain? I would really kind of like to see some rain because I haven't had any. We've been playing for four hours and I haven't had any rain. Oh, it's raining! We're gonna go on the sports tyres. Okay, it's not raining currently. Actually, the track's been wet just yet. It's about to start raining. It's got to start raining. Now. Turn the wipers on. So we're going to have to be quite careful here. Because the track's going to get pretty, pretty wet. The rain stopped, but it's about to start again. Feelings mutual, that's nice. Straight up the inside there. Stop raining. Are there any more on the way? Whoa! Careful. Is that all the rain we get? Oh, you have all-wheel drive with that, so it should be any better than should be better than the real drive. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It doesn't look like I'm going to get any more rain. The sun's come out. Oh dear, I should have I should have get the brakes through there too. It's okay. Whoa! I 
Come on, mate. See, the, oh, the track's like, track was like hardly wet down this main straight. Is that seriously all the rain I'll get? <laughs> oh, I just want to see some heavy rain. I want to race in some rain. I also sketch car designs as well. I'm okay at it. I'm no Ser I'm not a Sergio Pininfarina. That's cool. What uh, what sort of car designs? Like passenger cars or supercars? I don't mind a bit of Pininfarina action. They've produced some beautiful cars. The AMG GTR has me down the straight until I get up into my high gears. It's obviously maxed out. Oh! One, that one wasn't even my fault. Should have taken the racing line. Cool. 12 seconds away now with three laps to go. Three, four, five. Yep. Yeah. speed into there. Okay, we'll learn for next time. Yeah, drawing is something I think I tried to learn how to draw ages ago. Before I started YouTube, when I was looking for a hobby, I was like, oh, what if I start drawing? And then I sort of had a go at it, and I was like, oh man, this is boring. I don't think I'd have the patience to actually draw. But that being said, I have the patience to sit there and make a video, so... <laughs> I guess it's just what you like doing. There'd be plenty of people out there that would rather draw than make a video. Loads of time that lap. Oh no, you do you do need to break through there. Just check something.
Ja, nein, nein, oh gut, oh gut. Hey, maybe you can become the next Shmi 150 with your car spotting. I've thought about this, right? I can see myself, well, I guess I can't see myself doing it yet, but I've thought, like, what if I turn this car spotting into, like, a car presentation? I could, because I've thought about it, I was like, I could make videos, but obviously I would need to spend time with the car, I can't just, like, set up a camera and record just some rando's car on the street. I already feel weird enough, sort of, getting the photos of the cars as they're parked. But I've thought about that, I was like, oh, could I, oh, it's going to cut me off, but could I find a car and try and find where the owner is and ask, just be like, hey, can I film a video with your car? Just things that go around in your head. I think that was a good battle there. That's the standard of racing I like. I would have no issue doing that move on somebody online. Alright, let's get this right now. We've had some difficulties. There we go, that was probably a bit too early even. Still got one more lap here. It's starting to get dark again. I wonder if there's any more rain on the way. I don't think it's going to impact us this lap though. That's oversteer in a four-wheel drive. Oh, and he's nearly gone to bend it. Oh, I've gained loads of time there. 1.1 seconds up. Closed mouths don't get fed. Ah, little nugget of wisdom. It's true. You don't know unless you're ready for it. You've got to put yourself out there to get what you want. There we go. I think that's the meaning of the saying. That's what it sounds like to me. Who knows, maybe one day. Oh yeah, just a cheeky drift on the last lap and I've missed the braking point. Beautiful. That's okay. We still win that one with flying colours. We 
listen to that anti lag. Absolutely popping off. Alright, that should give us the next Zupra. Oh yeah. 1997 Supra RZ. Oh, that's good. So that's all the rain I got at the start. It's so disappointing. I will say the audio quality of the cars have immensely improved from the previous games. They made the right, oh, they made the right highs of the game on that front. Yeah, absolutely. Not every car sounds great, but most cars do. I would say this this car even sounds fine. I would say it probably sounds pretty similar to what this car would in real life. Some of the engines... See, I've played a little bit of Forza Horizon 5 as well. Forza Horizon 5. So, I, naturally, you, you end up comparing the games you play. Um, yeah, there's just no comparison, really. I've actually driven one of those. Oh, yeah. How does it compare, then? It was bone stock, though. Yeah, okay. I've, I've definitely upgraded mine a little bit. What do you mean it didn't have the, the anti-lag burble? Unacceptable. Another roulette ticket and Luca. What have you got to tell us about my Supra collection? So the Supra was the more powerful, bigger brother of the 86. Oh yeah, what a beautiful car. The 2000 GT. Lovely. Thank you for that telling me that beautiful super story. What's the next one? World Touring Car 600. Okay, uh, we'll go and see what these races are. We're not using the, the C63 AMG. That's for sure, because that is an oversteery beast. I used to work for a Toyota dealership in the service department. I remember how the BMW Zupra, the A90, first came in. And what's odd is that I had more room in the Lotus headroom-wise than the A90. I think the... I don't want to sound... I don't want to sound like judgmental here, but I think Japanese people in general are a little bit smaller than Western, than in, than people in Western cultures. Just genetics and stuff. I'm just simply making an observation. I'm not making a judgment. So I think what might seem adequate room for a Japanese person may be a little bit tight for uh, a Caucasian person. I guess I'm now assuming you're Caucasian, but uh, you sort of know what I mean. Someone from a Western culture.
Try the F12 Berlinetta. Do I have the car? I'm not not a hundred percent sure I have the car to be honest. And I do have to be careful with my credits because I don't I don't want to just that's the wrong. Oh no, maybe I do go in there and see if I have it. Change car. Manufacturer. No, I don't have any Ferraris at all. I'm sorry. Go see how much it is. Because I think I'd like to save for the Peugeot, so I, that Peugeot L500R hybrid, so I can race online. So I'm not just going to go ballistic on my credit spending, but we'll see how much the Berlinetta is anyway. The, bare, the bones of the car are German, but no, I'm actually black. Oh, I, I apologise. I should not have made that judgement for sure. It wasn't even a judgement, it was just a assumption, but I was incorrect, wasn't I? Yeah, I guess you're right. If the black bones are German, I guess I don't know. Better packaging in the Lotus, I guess, then. F12 Berlin at a 373 grand. My goodness, it's a little bit, uh... A little bit on the Expeno side, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to afford that one. Because I have to save for... Well, I don't have to, but I'd like to, because the new meta car, the best car for Daily Race B, is this thing. For some reason. No, not that. This. This thing. Million credits. It's, it's your cash, yeah. <laughs> if I had the cash for it, I totally would. I'll tell you what, looking at this thing, how, how, how do you get inside it? You must climb through the roof. What a weird looking car. But yes, I can't quite afford that yet. Unfortunately. What I will check though is if the daily races are the same. Yes, they are. So it's this one here. Initially, we thought it was the... Um, initially, we thought it was the R32. And that happens to have the top time, but that's actually a bugged... Uh, that's a bugged time. This person uh, found a bug to circumvent the power restriction. That's uh, a bug in the game. Hopefully it ends up getting patched. So that's why... Uh, that's why that's at the top. So the actual legal record is this. A 133.0. You can see it's all the hybrids. Unfortunately. There is an R32 here though. But again, I don't know what tune this guy is using. So this is this was one of my complaints about um, one of my complaints about the the daily races is that you don't know what tune. The cars are so expensive. Everything, the tuning is expensive in itself. Once you work out what you need to buy. But I've got a lovely menu book to keep doing, and I think I'm probably going to do this menu book now. I was gonna I was gonna call it a night after that one, but. I don't exactly feel 100% hungry yet, so that's okay. Alright, so we just need a card that's 600 performance points or less. You melt into it like the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, should I go the DeLorean? Surely I'll go the DeLorean. What I am going to go and do to the... Del oh, I should have bloody got in the car while I was on it. Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, I know. 
I'm fine with the tuning sort of being there. It's just it's so open at the moment with with all the settings. I just order a pizza. <laughs> oh mate, I wish I could be that uh I wish I could be that brash with my food choices. I have to watch what I eat for reasons. Basically, I only get takeaway if I've got no other option for food. And as right now, I have, I do have healthy stuff here, so I will be eating something healthy. I'll probably just microwave up a veggie, little steam veggie pack and a bit of fish. Actually, I've got, ah, oh, and some Yorkshire puddings. Aha. Uh -huh. I gotta go to the be honest. I gotta pack up my laptop and do my last building tour of the night. No worries, Thorn. I really appreciate you being here for for all this time though. It's been nice having your company. Cause yeah, oh yeah, it'd be it's approaching the crack of dawn for you, isn't it? Uh I am just gonna get some Oh, do I get the adjustable suspension? Uh, we'll just get the street, uh, the sports. Yeah, I want more stable steering. I do. You know, thanks, thanks for joining, Thorn. I really appreciate it. It's been nice chatting, as always. Hope to see you next time. Hopefully there's nothing lurking in the dark on your last building tour. Alright, uh, Suzuka, Red Bull, oh, Red Bull. Oh, uh, I don't have the soft tyres, honestly. I do have the softs. Is it restricted to the mediums? No. Oh, because I'm on the racing tyres. And that gives me 532. Alright. Uh, 494. It's a little underpowered. That'd be why I put it on the racing tyres. Oh. We'll go soft. Let's go and increase the... Uh, Let's increase the power. And... Let's give it better brakes. I don't want to make it an OP machine, so I'm just going to give it some low-level upgrades for now. Let's just go the... But I need straight line speed for red ball ring, so I'm gonna have to do that. Alright, we'll do that. That'll do. We'll get the ballast too, because I'll put some ballast towards the front of the car, because this is also a rear engine drivetrain. Okay.
All right, let's go with this. I'm 524. It might be a little underpowered, but... Uh, let's see how we go. Is that rain? Yes, it is. All right, that, that might honestly help me, to be honest. Sport softs. Okay, well... Let's go. Oh, heavy rain. Big gap. Oh, the, the lead is at turn four. track I go. Oh no. I think I've absolutely cooked this championship already. Bit of nitrous, why not? Gaining time through this middle sector, so... It's not all over. Oh, there's Tichney. Driving the Audi R8, of course. I think I should be okay to win this race because I've gained like uh, over 10 seconds on that lap.
No. Oh, it stopped raining. track should start to dry out now, right? Oh. A lot more grip all of a sudden. Big improvement in lap times there. Yellow flag, oh, gallo spun. need to start gaining this time because I've the tracks dried and I've fallen into a state of equilibrium I'm not able to gain. I think I'm going to win this now.
Oh. Oh, Mr. MCO, you, you were here that entire time? Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> No worries, all good, Mr. MCA, Tez, all good. Enjoy the rest of your evenings, I really appreciate you staying to watch. That's great, yeah, I'll finish up soon then. Turns out I do not have the pace as the track is dried anyway, so I don't even think I'm going to be able to finish this one right here, right now. All good, gentlemen, see you later. Make him a mod. Make him a mod. That's probably a good shout, to be honest. There you go. He's a top bloke, so... Yeah, I absolutely don't have the pace at the end of the race. Try again. I don't think I get. I don't think I have to pace the end of the race section win. So. That's not gone well. The track gets waterlogged by turn four.
make sure they don't re-overtake me here. Undone all of that nitrous I just used. Messing up the corners. <laughs> if it's clear that I don't have the pace once the track dries out, do I? But that's what happens when you get on the... Oh, mate. Oh, <laughs> oh Sawn, you're back. I'm on my phone, but I think a good car that's good to mod is a Shelby GT350R. The chassis was set up to handle, and I think it would be quick. It's pretty loose at uh, Trial Mountain. There's a sort of an infamous... There's an infamous Trial Mountain license test that's pretty sketchy in that GT350R. This car is capable, I just haven't upgraded it enough, it's just too, it's too slow. So, let's go and improve it a bit more. How did your last tour go? Nothing to report of? <laughs> Alright, what do we need to do to this bad boy? This. Racing exhaust manifold, that's going on the car. I really should have done that before, to be honest. I don't want to change the way the car sounds. I don't know, I just want to be able to keep the sound. I can't add a turbo. I can't add an intercooler. Although the intercooler goes with the turbo, right? Weight reduction, that'd probably help. They're quite expensive, aren't they? Alright. That should give me enough. That should give me enough straight line speed. Last chance. Last chance. I know I can easily put the wet tyres on and all that, but I want to do it on the sports tyres. It's not a race car. In my mind, the, uh, the 
In my mind, the racing tyres don't belong. So what's the rain situation? Yep, absolutely pouring rain. Okay, I feel like I'm a bit quicker here. Getting past these two into turn one, that's already happening. Right, the track's actually not very wet here, to be honest. Definitely nowhere near as wet as it was last time we were doing this. Just five minutes ago. As you can see, I can break a lot later. Oh! Okay, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> I'll get around the outside. Yes. Oh, it's a bit wetter down this part of the track. Oh, look at this gaggle of cars here. look like a hero if I got up those, uh, if I got through that group. Get out of it, his owl. Oh, bro. 
Saga, mate. Oh, don't go off the track. Oh, Jester. G'day, mate. I'm here to cheaply self-promote a guide I made on the quickest way to make money on the game so far. 1.8 mil in one hour. Well, there you go. If anyone's interested in working out that much money, check out Jester. Just for future, I would appreciate if you asked me before self-promoting, please. Just out of respect. I don't particularly want my viewers disappearing. I would like people to stay and watch me. Slide it through the last corner. Ah, <laughs> all good, Jester. No worries, mate. If anyone is interested, though. See, the track's drying out now, and I can't do anything. Whoa! All right. <laughs> this car isn't going to do it, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, I've spent all that money on it. Oh, We'll do this another day. We'll kick off the next stream with this championship. I've, I've lost it for today. Okay, what's this video link? Oh. Um, okay. No, this is Jester's. Here we go. Because the stream is ending, Jester, I'm more than happy to guide viewers to this now. So for anybody left... For anybody left, there's Jester's Guide. If you'd like to learn how to make some money, just because we're finishing up, I may as well direct viewers somewhere else. Um, yeah, this one's tough. They come back at you hard. Yeah, I did it on Inters, and I got five seconds clear, then Gallo came back hard. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Because I have, like, a matter of 10, 15, 20 seconds. Well, maybe not quite 20, but I'll probably have at least 10 seconds a lap in the wet, and then as soon as it dries... Everyone just swamps me. And uh, what does it recommend? 600 performance points, I think. Yeah, World Touring Car, yeah, 600 PP. I'm on 553 here. So it's not like I'm slouching. It's not like I'm slouching. I think I need to get a four-wheel drive car, upgrade it to 600, and then I should be able to do it. You know, I would like a challenge, so that's why I'm sticking on the sports tyres. But I, I don't want to just, you know, win by, uh, don't want to just win by 20 seconds. I'd like a nice race, but unfortunately, the DeLorean is not going to do it for me this time. But yeah, it's also approaching dinner time, so I'm feeling quite hungry. Uh, simple, quick and fun, yeah. I'll probably even check it out, to be honest. But yeah, no, um, what I, what I like to do, Jester, is sort of, uh, show my viewers somewhere else once I'm finished. So, like, I'm, I'm more than happy to, um, promote a video or, or a stream, especially if you're live. 
if you're live, I'll, I'll tend to find someone live and then go and raid them. YouTube raid. Um, but in this case, I'm happy to direct to the video, so that's all good. But yeah, I'm just trying to think of... Uh, are you in Atom's Discord? I'm not sure if you're in... Uh... If you're in Atom's Discord, because I was going to say, you could post a, a video link. No, it's all right. I think the way we'll do it for future gesture is just, you can jump in chat and ask if you can post the video. And I'll say, oh yeah, you can, we're about to finish, or, uh... oh yeah, you can message me on Discord, that's all right. I'm also happy with you jumping in chat and asking. Um, and then, because I, I can then say, oh yeah, we're about to finish, that's all good, or no, I was planning on going a bit longer, and then just do it next time. It's all good. Yeah, sweet as, bro. Thanks for understanding. Okay, well, I think that's going to call it for tonight. Nice stream there. We got through a good number of menu books. We're up to, what, menu book, uh, menu book 32 or something. Something nice? No, that's the wrong button. Finishing the top three. Yeah, we're going to have to sort a car out for this one because the DeLorean... The DeLorean ain't it, bro. But yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for jumping in chat. It's been a, it's been a good stream. Especially LA Thorne. He's been here talking to me for hours, so I really appreciate that. Um, yes, yeah, thanks everybody. Mr. MCA was in chat for a while too. Thanks Jester and Tez as well. And I had Act Arturo. Susan, Superstar, Baza, Rob Davis. Twitchy was here for a bit near the start. Naked Blade. Smitty. Realm of Crypto, and that's all I can see. That's as far up as my uh, chat scrolls. Anyway, but yeah, that's going to finish up this stream today, so I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and I'll catch you